Uh oh, uh oh, my bad. Good morning, man. Y'all kept me up late last night. Lord, 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 I'm too old for that. I got to be at the club with some Tito's or some Crown. I got to be out to be up that late, man. I need another bottle of water, Lord. Yeah, I got my little jug right here. I wonder if I can get some out of this without wetting my whole face up. Let me see. <laughs> Who said that low, low key T for life? Oh man, yeah. <laughs> that girl funny. <laughs> oh man. Oh, let me back up. My auntie said she catch me smacking like I was on the internet again. She said she was gonna smack me. So sorry, Auntie. Sorry, cuz. And, and my auntie ain't lying. <laughs> and Becky with the good hair, my auntie light skin. <laughs> so I know some light skin real ones because my auntie real. And that's why I'm covering my mouth. <laughs> Shout out my auntie Cheryl. Oh, I got an auntie named Auntie Tuka. Now she's short and she dark skin. I hope she ain't on live. She crazy as hell. <laughs> she the shortest one out of the sisters. But boy, she tried to whoop everybody ass. That boy, look here. Auntie Chuk, I love you. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, Auntie. I don't want no trouble. I'm going to see you soon. I don't want no trouble. You make that macaroni now. I don't want it. I don't, I don't want no trouble. But um, I put the brother AK Nation name and the um title and i'm not doing it clout chase i'm doing it to respond to the brother respectfully i'm not going to say respectfully and then say something disrespectful like a lot of you dudes do um i respect everybody's opinion and um oh whoa, 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 wait a minute i think i had an ashy face i respect everybody's opinion and uh, I'm not telling anybody to attack Jack or anyone. I don't agree with that attack stuff. But that's what where it's been going. And that's what I've been talking about. And that's why I was telling this brother behind the scenes that, yo, bro, you lower people contracts with your so-called jokes. That's not really jokes. Um, disrespecting another man uh, for your financial gain is not really a good thing. By his own admission, he said, yeah, we've been we've been picking on you. Everybody been picking on you for 20 years. And he said it like it was a good thing. So now that he's getting picked on because nobody's doing anything to him, they're just picking on him. And it's not because they like me. It's because of what he's saying. I tried to tell the brother. I text him behind the scenes. I can show it. Boy, you need to stop talking. I don't got no problem with Jack like that. He the one has a problem with me. You've never heard me talk about uh, CB4 before he talked about me. I just I just tried to tell the brother behind the scenes, you not a hell of a nigga. You, your perspective and your outlook on life is just different from mine. And we can both respect each other. I told him there's six lanes in the highway. My lane ain't the best lane, but it's the lane that worked for me. So don't look down on my lane because you in a lane that's speeding that you think is the best thing. But I like slow and steady. I like consistency. See, that speedball shit sometimes, it crash out. So we got a different perspective. You want to be connected to everybody. I want to be connected to something. I want to be connected to the elders. I know the elders not going to tell me something that's going to hurt me. You connected to advisors and agencies and things that make you say stuff, stuff and switch your words. So, brother AK Nation, I think you didn't see the full scope of things. 
And I don't think you understand that people are not attacking him because they don't they like me. They're going off on him because he what he represented all year long. And then what he said in the beginning and then what he started saying at the end. And then he's making all these assertions like our sister Maria only got the job because it was a sympathy job. When when you look around, she's been putting in the work. She's on football. Even Rachel said it. She's on football. She's on this. She's on that. If you're going to give her basketball, that means she's doing a good fucking job. <laughs> she's putting in the work for less money. So that's why she's asking for the big bucks because she earned it. You're not going to give me $5 million when I'm doing football, basketball. Da, 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 da. So it, it debunks your whole narrative when you hear the work this young lady has been put in. She's sacrificing family, children. She's doing all that, what they say she's doing. You don't think she should be compensated? What man can deal with a woman with that type of workload but a special type of man? Just like when it's vice versa. When it's a man that has a demanding schedule, it takes a special type of woman. So you don't think these people that sacrifice in their family to bring you and us entertainment. You, everybody admitted that she's been everywhere. And the thing that you don't get, my brother, is Rachel Nichols has been everywhere for years and she did not earn it. I can tell you firsthand, sir, I popped a cherry in the internet, uh, in the in the interviewing game on camera. I was her first interview. The ESPN dot whatever it was in the beginning, Rachel Nichols came to my house. She was a horrible interviewer. Too damn touchy-feely in my opinion. I feel like unprofessional, talking too much about shit I ain't want to talk about because we all can date back after the Sally Jenkins article uh, with the Washington Post. It fucked the Washington Post, in my opinion. So I said, fuck all y'all. So I did not want to do the interview. So I wasn't with the jipper spirit and all the touching and talking. But sir, to make all these assumptions like Rachel Nichols, just because she's Ra Rachel Nichols is the best for the job. I just don't understand how we got to that conclusion that it was a sympathy job when this woman has been putting in the work that we can prove. And I'm not saying for anybody to attack AK Nation, I'm just saying it's okay to have a different perspective. But the beautiful thing about the internet is there's motherfuckers like self-talk on this motherfucker. <laughs> Shout out to self-talk. So in Carcino, and all the YouTubers, Hitchbox, Daddy's Cooking, Gravity Takeout, Ticket TV, everybody. Um, except two people. <laughs> three now, since last night, except three people. But uh, shout out to everybody except three. And, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy, man. The, the internet is beautiful because what you say can and will be held against you. And it don't have nothing to do with Kwame. It has everything to do with what this brother is saying and doing. And we have to start holding people accountable for what they're saying in a responsible way. I'm not saying Jack don't need a job. He don't need to do this. He needs to be that. He just need to be real with himself that, hey, what if I start participating and be connected to the black community for real and not just when it's a photo op or somebody die? What if I'm really connected? What if I'm really linking with Kwame and getting together and creating shoe programs and we could do this shit from Brunswick to Texas? Since you go around the world and put your fist up and point at a statue, which it ain't really helping anything. No policy change, no nothing changed. And these kids still hungry and they can't read that good. So I'm just from a perspective of the underdog. Even though I was the number one draft pick, I came by way of a homeless shelter after my father went to prison. 
I was in the free lunch line for a little while, for a good little while. So I can never look down on people and talk to people the way you talk to them. No matter how much money I make, I'm still a man of the people. And I know an inside little scheme that they don't like men of the people. They take you in rooms. Faison Love told you this. They take you in rooms and they hear how you talk. And if it sounds like they ain't take the bite out your ass like they did our big strong brother that do all that robotic dancing, Tupac, 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 Terry Crews, if they ain't take the bite out you yet, they don't really fuck with you because ain't no goddamn sense in pumping all this iron if somebody can walk up on you and rub your nuts and in front of your wife. These people are taking the bite out you niggas by company policy and jobs. And I won't take not one job and I won't sign not one company policy because ain't a motherfucking thing wrong with this bite. And I'm sorry, brother, that you can't see. This is bigger than two niggas arguing. This shit goes so deep that they're controlling the minds of our people because we control the economic market. Them two black sisters were so beautiful up there. I wasn't even watching the fucking NBA. I was watching clips on YouTube, but not at them two beautiful. I don't want to disrespect your husbands or boyfriends and all that. I appreciate y'all brothers. If they with somebody, salute you two niggas. Uh, or white guys, I don't know. Asian guy, whoever. Salute y'all. But boy, look at here. Don't fuck up. <laughs> hey, don't fuck up. Because I'm watching the goddamn finals now. And I wasn't paying attention. But boy, look at here. I just want to get a glimpse. And that's how men are. We are visual. And you ain't take the visual out of me either. Now, I ain't afraid to say it. God damn it, them motherfuckers look good. Shit. Before they even say something, I'm... <laughs> I'm all motherfucking ears. Before they... <laughs> I'm a grin before she started talking. She... <laughs> Fuck out of here. What? That's sports. That is the epitome of sports. Beautiful women, the, the excitement of the game, talking shit with your friends, drinking a couple of beers, or uh, cervezas, or uh, whatever you call it. What, what, what's the uh, uh, Asian shit? Um, what's that? Shaki? You know, whatever you're doing to be social and have fun. That's what this shit is about. God dang, it was good to see them beautiful motherfuckers. <laughs> ESPN, do it again. Do it again and again and again. That's how you win. <laughs> and they smart. That's an added bonus because I was listening before they started talking. That's a good thing. If you can get a man to listen and look at you before you say something, you working with something. <laughs> you working with something. But, brother man, let's get... <laughs> Oh, um, oh shit, Auntie, sorry, hold on. Oh, y'all hit the like button, please. They are dislike, whatever you want, because they slowing down the notification. Shout out to all the YouTubers that's having fun on YouTube now. Instead of hating on each other, have some fun. This shit fun, ain't it? But, uh, oh, what I was about to say before I started laughing. Anyway, we got to get to, oh, no, I had so much fun last night uh, talking shit, playing around. There were so many people being able to show books and uh, expose their YouTube channel. I think I might do that after I read the Super Chats. I think I might drop the link in the description box. But we got to stay on task and stay on topic. We got to have a question about the programming and how to help the youth. Or if you have a disagreement with me about coding and trades, we got to stay on topic and then promote the hell out your shit. I'm with it. Then uh, I might do that. 
But we got to have some fun. We can't be uh, low-key TV for life, a hating-ass nigga that was too stupid to monetize his page when he was having just as much as the hottest run as I was having because he was using my face and my likeness, and I allowed him to do it. Then he started talking shit about me. Then I could have hit it with a copyright, so he had to put it on private. And I could still probably do it, but, you know, I'm trying not to attack black, but he fat and stupid. <laughs> and that's no fat shame, and I just don't like him. I just don't like him. There's just that one fat. I'm cool with all the other fat. Fuck that fat back. <laughs> we got to start being able to let people individually talk shit about something that's wrong with an individual. He a fat ham hawk, hamburger neck looking some bitch that look like he can go two rounds with my dogo out there with them fucked up teeth he got at the bottom. Yeah, don't fuck with me, goddamn. <laughs> hey. I told y'all I went to school with XJ 900s on. You didn't think I learned how to do that? You going to talk about a nigga that had to walk barefoot for a couple of weeks? Them niggas try to act like, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas try to act like I walked barefoot my whole life. <laughs> Man, you better figure out some history about my brothers down in Brunswick, Georgia. <laughs> nigga, I ain't walk. Man, listen here. When, you, when a man fuck up like my daddy did to where a woman was all dependent on him and he married her, then that's something different. You know, a woman going to go through a phase where she got to get it together. He ain't had the opportunity to leave her no money or nothing like that. So, yeah, we was fucked up. She had eight children. What the fuck? And this ain't, if a woman got eight children right now in 2021, she hoping ain't no nigga around. She, she can go down to the goddamn housing authority and she can get goddamn sick. What is it? Sick money cut back. A five bedroom house? Shit, hell you mean? It wasn't like that in the 80s. I can tell you that right now. It wasn't like that in the 80s. So, um, I know how to joke. But, Mr. AK Nation, what's going on with this situation? Is Brother Jackson double talk. And I don't know if you saw this video or not. I covered this video. But we're going to try to give you more information and hopefully, you know, with the more information, maybe you can come to a different conclusion. Maybe not. Because what Jack said in that other video, it sounded good. It sounded clean. Uh, but Rachel Nichols has been connected to Diane Sawyer. She's been connected to her husband, uh, Matt and Mark is the father. Like she's connected. So there's a reason. So the, what Stephen Jackson is saying yeah, that sounds good, but she's got on from basically nepotism. So don't complain now when you've been promoting woman equality, you've been promoting uh, females and black women getting jobs. Why are you mad that now it's happening? Oh, because you're about tired of this Black Lives Matter shit. That's what they allegedly say. Well, now we heard the video. They're getting tired of this shit. That's what they say. So they about to kick Black Lives Matter in the air because usually when white folks get tired, Somebody get kicked in the head. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to let Brother Jackson show you the video that you might have not have seen that why people so mad at him. And he went further than just disagreeing with the situation. He started talking directly to black folk directly. And that's, you know. All known gentlemen right here. Shout out to self talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to see what's going on. I saw this video and I didn't want to watch all of it because I said, I didn't see what's going on with the people. And I, I see the two different noses. I said, damn, one long and sharp like a pelican and a break a goddamn champagne glass. And then one big like a motherfucking mallet that'll crush any boulder. So I said, shit, I got to see what's going on. I, you know, I watched about two, two minutes and 90 seconds. So, we got to see what the hell Stack 5 talking about. I got a little fruit fly in here. Motherfucker, you can get the hell off. <laughs> All right, man. All right. All right. Let's, let's, let, let, let's see what's going on. Self-talk. I watched about a two, two, three, maybe two, three minutes. I ain't for sure. But right there, we got to see what's going on. I caught the tail end of this. So I don't know about this first part. But all I know is that's the same green shirt. I did a video about this. He got the same goddamn green shirt. Double talking motherfucker. I can see why Dr. Boy's your mentor. Cause boy, you double talking. 
I'm gonna show you love and I always show you the respect regardless of where I was or what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I appreciate Puff DHP. We all know how that shit went down with me. You dig what I'm saying? But we need some clarity in there. Because this is only looking one way. And you know we team the real, just like we was team you. We need answers. No, let's cook the bitch. Yeah, get on there and stack fire. Yeah. This ain't nothing to do. You know what I mean? This ain't nothing to do. I've been saying fuck you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? But ain't no need to to be in need to not speak on it. And everything else has been spoken on, you know. So we need to figure out what was the context of what you were saying. I agree. You know, we the yeah. We the you, yeah. That's just how it goes. Hey, now Jack, boy, you sound like a real nigga. Salute, my nigga. You talking about boy? So AK Nation, I know you might not have seen this, but he just said out his mouth he with Maria, Team Maria first. You know we're gonna rock with our people. And then something changed. And my grandmother told me, your first mind is your best mind. So let's see what happened to him. But everything you said right there, boy, I rock with. We need to check this shit out. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't that talented either. You just allegedly got married. So you need to pipe down a little bit. So let's let, let, let's just have her turn. Hold up now. Hold up, big swole up. I was with you, dog. Something happened, boy. You must have got a text in the middle of this. They might have cut your broadcast off uh, or promised they were going to take some of them pretty shoes and pretty cars and all that pretty shit that you say you praying for. <laughs> White Zaddy <laughs> was about to snatch that shit. So seems like you changed your tune. <laughs> Why you ain't just praying? <laughs> Why you got to change your tune? You could have prayed and it would have been good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 20 minutes later. 20 minutes. You know, we did some things and we frustrated and, and you know Rachel did this. Oh boy, he started off. We all ramble. Oh, so you was just rambling. Hey, hey, so Jack, you were frustrated while you were talking. <laughs> So wait, when you were standing up for Maria, you was frustrated. You was rambling and frustrated. How the fuck you got frustrated? You was just up there standing up for your people. So AK Nation, don't blame this shit on me because this boy <laughs> couldn't make. <laughs> Allegedly, he couldn't make uh, pass the SAT or the ACT to get qualified for college. Allegedly. I don't know. I'm just crazy. I snap. But listening to this brother after what he said has nothing to do with Kwame. This man just said he was going to ride for his peoples. And you definitely ride with Team Maria. And you got some explaining to do. And then he get back up there and the way he explained it is we all ramble and get frustrated. How did he get frustrated? What was he frustrated about? He didn't say, hey, I'm frustrated right now, but I'm going to tell y'all something. He started off like he knew what the fuck he was talking about. So I don't know. It's mm -mm -mm. We all ramble. We say things and we frustrated. And, and, you know, Rachel did this. Oh boy, he started off. We all ramble. Oh, so you was just rambling, huh? Oh, oh okay, okay. That wasn't, that wasn't you. You were just rambling. <laughs> It frustrated. He <laughs> rambling and frustrated. <laughs> just like that, come on. Just like that, because you know we're riding real. We're gonna ride with our people mm -hmm. first. That's just how it goes. Just, they just plain and simple. I talk to Rachel, and I, and, I, and I know a lot of things she was saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't have to talk. Hold on, I'm sorry. Hold on, somebody. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Now I saw this part on 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 Instagram. You said you talked to Rachel, right? Did you ever talk to the young lady Maria? You know, you say you you gonna ride with her. You got Rachel's perspective. 
you talked to him. Did you talk to the other young lady, Maria, and get her perspective? Did you, Jack? Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't remember you saying you got hit her perspective on him. We put Maria in position trying to give Maria a sympathy job. Selling our house, buying this mm. house. What do we think? Negative me. Too much gun. Control freak me. We leave nothing to chance. We get a cash offer from his. We all ran What did he say? You talked to him. Did you talk to the other young lady, Maria, and get her perspective? Did you, Jack? Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't remember you saying you got hit her perspective on him. We put Maria in the position trying to give Maria a sympathy job. <gasps> we all ramble. We say things. We That's what I'm trying to say. How do you know? How can you just just say emphatically that it was a sympathy job when you can <clears throat> when we can see that when Rachel even said that she's been going around the network doing everything that she's asked to do. She has a schedule. They're asking her to do this while her contract is low. That's how they do it. They work the shit at you for the million, <laughs> but don't want to give you eight, nine or whatever she deserved. That's all the work she's put in. They don't want to give her the money while she don't got, while she's getting a lower pay grade. Allegedly they'll work the dog shit out. Of Soon she asked for more. Like, well, who you think you is? <laughs> this shit's sad. So how can we sit here and say that we can prove that this is a sympathy job when we can prove that she's been working her butt off? This is wrong. I'm sorry, brother. This is wrong. And this nigga is a double talking ass nigga. Be frustrated and, and you know, Rachel did deserve their job. It's just, it's just plain and simple. I talked to Rachel, and I, and I know a lot of things she was saying out of frustration because ESPN put her in a bad position. And they even put Maria in position trying to get Maria a sympathy job. Mm -hmm. She cover football, she cover basketball. She working. She working for the spot. So would it be better for her to get the spot if they said she only do one thing? How does she deserve the spot? She's proven that she deserves the spot. They laughing at the Black Lives Matter movement. Me too and Black Lives Matter. They were trying to make themselves look good because all oh, 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 oh. the the black church the George Floyd stuff is good. Oh, oh, oh. Now, who was he, who was she talking to? Let me get let me get back to Jack talking. His name is, is LeBron. I want to hear Jack. I think my is that King. I called Step Liberty. My brother. You have some. Uh oh, went too far. Just saying. It seemed like I think I snapped. I don't know. Um, so ESPN tried to make themselves look good by taking the job from Grace that she had already had, that they already told us she had, that she deserved, and give it to Maria just to make themselves look good. It wasn't a genuine. So if you take a job from a white woman that she rightfully deserved, 
for whatever reason, whatever stat she's basing that off of, and give it to a black woman, it makes ESPN look good. It can't be that she worked hard. It can't be that she deserved it. It always got to be an asterisk by it. Okay. Black and black males and black women. You always got to be an asterisk by it. Job they want to get for real. <laughs> <laughs> it's being behind all this, bro. It's all they from. You know what I'm saying? I can't blame Rachel. I love Rachel. I'm staying behind until I spoke to her. Stand behind the real too. But yes, man, y'all some suckers. Y'all some suckers because y'all did this. Y'all tried to give the real job and it wasn't cheap. And look what happened. Come on, man. It's all ESPN, though. We love both of them. Think about this, though, bro. How many times we as black people said that we was qualified? We know we qualified. That was bad oh, enough. Man, man. I would be mad too if I worked my whole life for a job and they could give it to a white dude just because Donald Trump or just because a white kid got killed and at the time. Hey, Jack, I can see why you had to go to uh, Jack Dorsey. Yeah, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. Yeah, 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 now let's get this stupid ass shit you say out your mouth again. We ain't getting recorded, but we say shit too behind closed doors. So I get it. I get it. I rate you mad. No, you say shit right in the public. Then you on Instagram, Jackass. Race ain't never showed you no signs of being racist. Sir, let me ask you a question. What racist person do you know? Gonna show you that you racist. They racist. You gotta catch them, jackass. Just like, just like self talk said. Didn't they have to catch Donald Sterling? Didn't they have to record him in his private setting? All the other times he didn't act like he was racist, did he? She, he, he gave you niggas job, didn't he? That's what he said. Allegedly. Didn't he give you niggas car? Shit, he thought he didn't get enough of you niggas. What the fuck you mean? He ain't racist. Allegedly, <laughs> Jack, boy, look at him. If somebody don't take your goddamn phone, boy, I know something. <laughs> hey, Jack. Jack. Hey, look at him. You need to be like Becky with the good hair. And you need to shut your back in the mouth. But this shit crazy. You talking about now? What racist person is going to will willingly show you they racist? You have to catch them. Nigga, buck dancing, boy. You just, you were standing on your shit earlier, boy. Woo, woo. Now look at you. Frightened. I would be mad too if I worked my whole life for a job and they don't give it to a white dude just because Donald Trump was on or just because a white kid got killed and at the time it didn't look better for a white person to have a job. That shit don't make a no kid sense. got killed. What the? The fuck are you talking about? Y'all can't be real with y'all selves and a lot of y'all looking for him. And now this is the part where he really got into his opinions and this is why people is really mad, Brother AK. This has nothing to do with Kwame. He starts talking directly to what he feels about what's going on in our community. For real? And back one more thing for y'all, IG world. Y'all got to be real with yourselves. A lot of y'all can't be real with yourselves, and a lot of y'all looking for handouts. Woo! Damn, Jack. Tell them how you really feel. What they doing? Boy, Jack, Jack. <laughs> oh, Jack. You talking about y'all? Boy, you taking the tongue of your white daddy, y'all. You might well say you people. Not we people, say you people, boy. 
Y'all, they gonna have you say next. That nigga say, y'all looking for him now. Y'all gonna learn today. And back one more thing for y'all. IG world. Y'all gotta be good with y'all said. A lot of y'all can't be good with y'all said. A lot of y'all looking for him now. A lot, of, a lot of y'all don't deserve nothing because you've been sitting there all night putting in the work and, and complaining about <laughs> That's why they mad at him, AK. No disrespect, my brother. That's why they mad at him. Maybe you didn't see this part. And that's why we're talking about this. See, that's why you got to listen to stuff two or three times. Because last night, it was the fourth, and I was having a little four fun. So I was a little bit, I was in there. I was, I was in pocket. And so I didn't hear this part. You say what now, boy? A lot of people don't deserve nothing. So you think some of your own people don't deserve nothing. You can't tell them that your behavior will hinder you from getting something, so you have to be motivated to always get it. You tell them they don't deserve nothing. Got to be real with y'all said, a lot of y'all can't be real with y'all selves, and a lot of y'all looking for handouts. A lot of, of y'all don't deserve them because you've been sitting at home not putting in the work and, and complaining about other people. Why they doing this and why them and not me? But when you deserve something, when you work, when you put in the work for it, you should be mad when you don't get it. A lot of y'all won't understand that. Y'all are still living off your mom. Still living in your mama's house. So wonder why you ain't winning our <laughs> This what you think of your people, Jack? They live with their mama. This what you really think, huh, boy? Look at his face. Boy, he mad for that white lady. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, come down on these niggas, Jack. Damn. They must have promised you they were going to take something away from you, boy. What, they going to take them little porcelain teeth? Good boy say, ooh, ooh. If put your foot in your mouth, had a face. I think it'll look something like that. <laughs> Jesus, Jack, speak to the people. Boy, look here. Now, you know what, Jack? Let me explain something to you, Jack. If you really did stop smoking, I'm going to give you some advice. If you're going to keep talking. Nigga, get high again. <laughs> That's the best thing you can do. You're going to keep trying to talk. Nigga, get high again like you was, Alessia, and carry your punk ass to sleep, boy. This shit you say, you need to get high again, boy. You know what I'm saying? You need to tell everybody to look, fuck that. This is who I am. It helped me think. It helped me shut the fuck up. It helped me sleep. You need to get high and carry your ass to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though. Why them and not me? But when you deserve something, when you work, when you put in the work for it, you should be mad when you don't get it. A lot of y'all don't understand that. Y'all are still living off your mouth. Mm. Still living in your mama's house. Mm. And wonder why you ain't winning or you got nothing going on. I'm going to hit y'all with harsh truth. Mm. I am the face for equality. But I also, I also have the face of being black and proud and being strong. Hey, what the fuck does that mean? Can somebody tell me the face for equality? What the hell does that even mean? You a hell of a nigga, Jack. This nigga, I'm him. I can bake a cake. I, I'm goddamn. I'm I'm the real thing. I won championship. Yeah, yeah I won the bus. I can shoot. Yeah, yeah, I'm a real guy. I ain't trying to be tough. I I been in shootout. Yeah, you know that he, he easy. Boy, you everything you say, boy, you sound like a hell of a nigga, boy. <laughs> boy, you talk like a hell of a nigga, boy. You a hell of a hell of a hell of a hell of a boy. You a hell of a hell of a boy. Woo, that's an old school song. Hell of a hell of a boy. Boy, Jack, you a hell of a hell of a boy. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Everything you say out your mouth make you look like bless three six five. Good morning. 
Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. When uh, I got that going on, I'm a hitch out with a horse too. I am the face of equality, but yeah. I, also, I also have the face of being black and proud. And you bake cakes. I'm going to give this mine. I'm asking nobody else, nobody to give it up. I'm going to take it. Like I've been doing. <laughs> 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 hey, you must think you got your own YouTube or something. You ain't got your own YouTube channel. You ain't even on your own platform. You ain't asking white people for nothing. Nigga, please. <laughs> How they said, damn, you played yourself. <laughs> well, you let them pretty cars and them pretty shoes that the alleged Donald Sterling type been giving you, them little trinkets. You let that shit go to your head, boy. <laughs> you said, I'm dumber than a motherfucker. Lord have mercy. Let me let you finish chewing your own stuff up. Boy, you slow the creep up. No, you slow a palm roll, a palm roll. But I also, I also have a face of being black and brown. And being strong, we're going to give his mind. I'm asking no white person, nobody to give it up. I'm going to take his mind, like I've been doing. But y'all, y'all, y'all put the kid when the jump, when the jump first started. Wait till I have all black. Remember that? I told y'all. You're going to take what's yours, like you've been doing. Fingers took your goddamn job. <laughs> Fingers get your ass five finger distance. But you said Rachel hired all black people. So I didn't know Rachel had hiring and firing power. So Rachel hired all black people. Did she hire all the black people that's speaking up for her right now? Must have or something. Because how does Rachel Nichols have hiring and firing power at ESPN? You said she hired a lot of black people. How? Who, who runs and owns ESPN? Rachel? Because if she did, then she could have put herself in position over Miss Maria. So how can she hire a bunch of you niggas? I'm just saying, you niggas, the more y'all talk, the more it sounds like a bunch of bullshit and that I was right. I alleged that it was a go-along, get-along game. And then after that, I've been attacked by all the people this brother know. Doctors been talking about me. These niggas so squeamish, they can't even let their own words speak for themselves. They, they're saying this shit. I didn't say nothing about Dr. Boyce. He said something about me. People hear what he's saying, know he's full of shit, know he's connected to Charles. Woo! And then this guy, he just says whatever somebody tell him to say. All of them. Brother Kendrick Perkins admitted I was put into an uncomfortable position. A man felt uncomfortable. Anybody who has that should have a right if they feel uncomfortable to remove themselves from that situation without any recourse. But he was made to stay there and talk about something that he wasn't comfortable talking about because he personally felt he had nothing to do with it. That's not freedom. And I'm saying we need to start sticking up for guys that if they do say what's right, because we always saying, well, I want nobody on TV speak what's right because they don't want the cops coming to their house like they coming to mine. They don't want motherfuckers telling them to play in traffic like they telling me. They don't want motherfuckers looking at me like they trying to scruff with me while I'm out at home, motherfucking depot. Well, some niggas cool, but they don't want niggas just, they don't want these problems. So if you're going to ask people to stand up and say something, Kendrick Perkins was worried about losing his income for his wife, which is something in his family, which is something that you have to respect. Now, what we can't respect is that, how is it that in America we can have a man or a woman, but a man. Something that can snap and start destroying shit. A man. How can you have him feel uncomfortable and, and, and be made to feel like 
This is what he got to do to feed his family in America. Why is there no protections for Brother Kendrick if he say, you know what? I don't agree with you, uh, Rachel. And what you should do is apologize right here, right now on air, because we've been speaking up for equality amongst women this entire time. Rachel, you've had a great run. And there's no need for you to start bashing somebody else or being jealous of somebody else. That's it's their turn to have their run. So let's respect each other because we're a team. And I think you just made a mistake. Apologize on up to your mistake and let's move on. That's what being an adult is. But this man couldn't be an adult for a job. Well, he's still an adult, but he couldn't say what he wanted to say because of a, of a job. And that's what I'm here to expose. Company policy, all of this stuff is a part of controlling people. I hope you guys see the bigger picture. It's not about fighting and arguing with people. I do that shit to laugh at these niggas. They said they wanted to joke. So Becky with the good hair is a good joke. A nigga jumping over the gate when he got the key to the gate. That's a good joke. He might not like it, but he shouldn't have started this shit. And you shouldn't be joking with people real life. So since you want to joke, motherfucker, we can all joke. And that might show people to give more respect out. And then you can receive something back. See, I'm not just up here joking and fucking around. We really do have kids reading on a fourth grade reading level. We really do get, have kids with big ass shoes or, that don't have shoes for their feet. We really, really do need coding in schools all across America with the best teachers and i think they should be our child prodigies that's what i think today some bad mother you know what so these are real things that i'm speaking about that everybody seemed to keep going straight to the jokes nobody want to argue with the real shit that if you really want to change your community you got to do some fucking work you got to hold the goddamn mirror up a little bit and say you know what we do need to start looking back to these kids. Fuck what we think. We are adults already. We made some wrong choices. We made some good choices. We still got time, but let's pour into these kids so they don't have to go through what we went through. They should not have to go through elementary and, and high school learning about Christopher Columbus and learning about shit that they're not going to use in everyday life. From middle school on, those kids should be working with fucking computers and coding and every goddamn thing they need to do for real life. And other kids need to be playing with small gas engines and making sure we have a healthy focus on reading and mathematics and STEM. That's what we need to teach our children. And they don't want our children to be more educated. Right now we have grown men that can't even think We have grown men that can't make rational decisions. That they don't know how to weigh out. Is it that serious that if I do this, I'm going to do 20 years. Fuck that. I'm going to look good. Boy. I ain't going to try me. That's too much emotion. We got to get back to being men and women and not whatever else we call ourselves. I'm triple O side. I'm a street nigga. I would never disrespect my ancestors and call myself a street nigga. I would never disrespect my ancestors and act like I'm so pro-black, but the first time I see a nigga I don't like, I got the dick out. What y'all call it? I got the pistol with the dick out, the 30 round dick out. How can you say this shit cross your airways and then turn right back around talking about white people don't like us? Nigga, you don't like us. And every time they pay you some goddamn money, you show us you don't like us. And I'm sorry that I offend some people because I talk about motherfuckers that I believe that destroys our community. And only because you like them, you can't see. I don't like nobody that ain't for the children. I don't like no adult that if it ain't children first, not one of them. And because I have baby mamas, and because I be around people, I can smell it on you when it's you first before your kids. And yes, I don't like you. And that's my right to do so. 
not gonna cry and complain with adults that just want to talk about theories and bullshit. Prove it. And these kids can prove it. There was an 11 year old. How many motherfuckers can do that? An 11 year old white kid hacked allegedly a Swiss fucking bank account and took millions of dollars and deposited his daddy account. How the fuck did that boy do that? Y'all don't want to talk about that. We ain't gonna never hear from that little boy again. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> that boy did something that was great and scared a whole lot of goddamn people but they don't know how to deal with greatness they don't know how to goddamn let this young man teach other young men so those young men can build the damn firewalls to really protect the fucking bank instead of your missiles still think I'm crazy now we're going to let some people in, but today I'm not going to do the, uh, I'm not going to do the, the rambling and the people that just, I don't know, uh, low key. You can call in cause you are, you, I need, ugh, boy, you the epitome of why I'm saying we need coding in schools and shit, because if you was on your purpose, and you knew how to do the shit you talking about instead of just speaking truth to people with all this stupid shit you saying out your mouth. You would know how to put together and build something. A man is supposed to build, motherfucker, not run his goddamn mouth. I can show you some buildings that I built, I had built. And that's what a man's supposed to do, boy. And you ain't on your purpose. So that's why I don't respect shit you say. Show me something you build, punk. Otherwise, shit your goddamn mouth when it comes to me. My value of a manhood is what I build and leave to the next generation. Not this bullshit trying to be perfect for the world. The world don't know me. The world ain't gonna feed my kids. That's my job. So you better get on your purpose, boy. Stop worrying about other motherfucking men all day, punk. What time is it? Y'all motherfuckers gonna make me crack up, crack open the, the Riesling. No, oh, y'all gonna make me goddamn do shit. I used to live in LA. Motherfucker find any reason to drink. Drinking that breakfast football game in LA come on at nine o'clock in the goddamn morning. <laughs> Ten o'clock. Nine o'clock in the morning, you at the goddamn uh store getting beer. I, I'm like, oh, I'm with my homeboy to drink. Hold on, we finna drink beer at 9 a.m. The football game on 10 Yeah, we got a pregame. I say, I'm from the motherfucking side. We don't start pregame until goddamn 11 30, 12. We pregaming at 8 39. I said, holy shit. Football in LA is a little bit different. <laughs> shit, you be drunk in a motherfucker for breakfast. <laughs> uh, I'm going to drop the link in the chat. Please, please, please. Let's stick to a topic today. I don't want to be considered rude. Because if y'all make me go crank up, crack open my camis, I will. I'll pause this shit, go get my camis. I don't think I got no Reese. Cause that boy, that stupid ass boy last night made my head hurt. But the link in the chat. Oh, and uh Judge Joe Brown was uh he texted me this morning at 7 a.m. said he fell asleep. He had a headache, and uh he might could try to do it later. So We'll try to do it later. All right. We got somebody up here. Sharita, can you come to the stream? Put Hi. your uh, can you put Hi. your come on video? Hi. Um, I'm not decent right now. But anyways, I'm good to talk to you. But anyway, I sent you an email because I um really would like to help when it comes to the kids. Kids are our future. Um I was I'm in the metro um, Atlanta area and I don't know anything about Brunswick. I was thinking maybe you can get a, a group of people to come and um, come help out. And I would love to, you know, be one of the ones that um, that are that's a part of the. Um, I don't. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I'm, a, I'm, what I'm, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna go I'm through. 
No, don't be nervous. I'm going to go through and check my emails. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to activate my old iPhone 8. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want you guys to start texting me and things like that. And because um, I do better with text. And then I'll go through each text. And then based on what it is, I'll give you guys a call back and we can set it up from there. But I would love the more help the Mary. I would love to have you guys come down because mm -hmm. the more pictures, the more information, the more people see it the more mm -hmm. we could duplicate it. So I would love for the more, the more to marry. Mm -hmm. But my name is Sharita. Sharita. I don't want to say my last name on here, but if you see the email and my name is Sharita, but again, I was just thinking, you know, get a bus of people to come down and, you know, help out. And if you need someone to help oversee it, you know, I would love to, you know, help you out with that because okay. I love what you're doing and, you know, it's great. I'm actually glad they, I hate the fact that the way that it came at you, but I'm actually glad that they came at you because we need more men like you. I'm I'm 36. I'll be 37 in August. Brother, when I tell you I haven't seen any men around our age that speak the way that you speak, it's man. I love it. Thank you, Kwame. And continue right, to do you. what you do. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Um, men do speak like, like I speak. I don't want to sound like I'm the most roars man, but they do. They just do it in select places. They do it in barbershops. And that's a scary thing when men have to hide to talk like me. Almost every man talk like me. They're just not going to do it around you. That's why I used to be called locker room talk. And it ain't always about sex and all that. It's about the stress and the different things we go through, uh, with women. It's just that women can say it outside and on air and on TV. We have been trained to not say nothing or you ain't no man. And that's not true because there's always two sides to the story. How can you learn anything if you're only going to get one perspective? So let me, uh, KJ, put that blood out, man. We ain't trying to show that to the kids right now. <laughs> I'm about to bring you on. It's a Kwame Brown. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet yeah, you. Bro. They caught me with that last night. What's up, brother? Uh, man, first off, good morning. Good morning and, to uh, you. I would love to say I appreciate what you're doing, man. You're giving a young man and the young women, uh, the African-Americans, the black people out there a voice, man. You're giving us all a voice because, you know, sometimes out here just working at nine to five, getting caught up in that everyday life, we don't get that voice. You know, mm -hmm. we've been we've been predictive programming, watching CNN and Fox. We're hearing what they see, what they want us to hear. And just to be able to have this voice, like I'm on live talking to you right now, man. Mm -hmm. I, I just appreciate that because like that young lady just said before me, it's not enough people doing this, man, talking about what you're talking about. They mm -hmm. not they not go, they don't want to expose the truth. It's either because they benefiting from it or they just mm -hmm. don't want to speak on it. They're too comfortable where they're at. So mm -hmm. I, I man, just please keep doing what you're doing. Yes, and, sir. Uh, I, I just appreciate it, man. The man you is, I look up to you, man. I never and I'm not even gonna lie. I never even heard of you before until I seen you on YouTube and I heard your topics, and I was like, mm -hmm. hold on, man. He talking about some real stuff. He talking about stuff that <laughs> get yeah. people going you know what i'm yeah. saying so for you to put your safety and your family out there just to have to, to give us all the voice in a platform i appreciate that man because nobody doing what you're doing I, i'm a 24 year old man in florida i just got off work i just mm -hmm. got off work and you gave me a chance just to speak and say yes, this man and, and to all the young women and uh man out there that's listening to him man we got to stay together we got to stay woke you know, and like you say, man, us, man, it's time for us to stop hurting each other. We got to come together, start building. Hey, when I heard mm -hmm. you talking about building, look, I picked up a tape measure. I'm trying to, you know, measure everything <laughs> I can. You know, it's just the simple stuff, man. You know, yeah. building a shed. I'm out in the yard yeah. more, trying to get a garden going. Mm -hmm. Man, people, man, listen to what he's talking about because this stuff is real. This stuff is real. And the thing is, they move in silence and they move with symbolism. So they, mm -hmm. you, you, so, so. It's two sides of it. It's one you can yep. see, one you can hear, which we live in, and then it's one that they live in that we don't hear and we don't see. So you know what I'm yep. saying? Behind that, it's a whole agenda, and they got a yep. whole bunch of puppets from Stephen A. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, what's that? I don't even know his name. Steve Jackson. What's the dude trying to be? Uh, CB4. CB4. Yeah, look at CB4, <laughs> y'all. Look how he was just acting with Black Lives Matter when uh his friend died, and he was going hard with everything, pushing yep. Black Lives Matter. Now look how he bound down to him, and it's just that simple. They'll check you, yep. and they checked yep. him at the door when he started now, running his mouth. Now, let me let me tell you a story. Let me show you how to how to get around that, and this is a true story, because I, I had a friend that I grew up with. Well, I still have him as a friend, but he grew up, but he 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 went to prison for three, uh, three and a half years. So he was in the mind state like, man, I can't get a job. I can't do this. Man, you make millions. I ain't going to never be able to do this now that I have this felony on my record. 
So I said, look, so he got, he finally got a job, but every time he would get paid, he'd go spend his money on shoes and clothes. I said, bro, you got to go through something. You, you can't, you can't be looking like that while working. You already put yourself in, in a hole. Yep. I said, so I tell you what, he, he argued with me at first because, you know, we had different perspective. I said, yes, just hear me out. Sir. I said, check this out. If you stop wearing all them Jordans and just buy one pair of boots and wear the same pair of shoes, yes, sir. go to work every day and save your income tax. He saved three years worth of income tax because normally yep. his income tax, he'd go buy a car. Yep. That he'd have to buy one every year. Yep. I said, don't buy the car. Don't buy the shoes. By the time he saved three years worth of income tax and he started saving like, he could only save like 25% of his paycheck. Yep. After he did that, I matched it and he went and bought a house. But That's he had cool. enough He had enough money to buy this other house on the courthouse step. I took him to the courthouse step. He like, dang, this is enough to buy a house? I'm like, yeah, yeah it's, turn, it's turnkey. It's 750 a month for this amount. Yep. Uh, all you got to do is put this down. You and get this, your credit you is working. Yeah, he's yep. working on his fourth, third or fourth house right now. Yep. And yep. now he, he has his own landscaping company. Now his perspective has changed. So he's not out here saying what I can't do. So that's exactly. what it's about. It's about learning. Thank you. They, they want us to believe we can't do that stuff. And that's yeah. what we need to be learning, man, about credit. Make mm -hmm. sure your credit is good because we think it's so hard to get into a house or to own property when really it's not. You make no. sure your credit is good. You get you a credit card, a secure credit card. You make sure you yep. plan on time. And you make sure... You, just doing what you got to do, whether that means sacrificing. Like you say, don't get them Jordans. Let me go get a pair of boots. He was, mad, he, was mad. he was mad. He said, my man, my homeboy is stunning on me at the club. I couldn't even go. I man. said, man, now you stunting on them because you ain't got to jump up every month. He got residual income. Priorities. Yeah. Priorities. Now he Priorities. jumping his truck. He jumping his new truck. He getting his, uh, He got his little landscaping business. He take his sons out there. He's That's showing his out. He got That's a 10-year-old son. About. He's showing landscaping. He got Thank a five-year-old. He's showing pressure washing. Yep. So it just gives you a different perspective when you can do that. And a lot of people don't think they can do it. They got yep. people looking up at celebrities saying, I want what they got, and I just got to have this great skill to do it. No, you just got to have the know-how. And that's all it is. The mindset. And uh, yes, I know there's so many people that, uh, that, that, that want to talk to you, so I'm going to move on quick. But I do want to say, just like the young lady said, uh, I have family in Georgia, man. Uh, I grew up in Gwinnett County. So okay. If you need any help right now? I'm located in Florida. Uh, I've been out here the last eight years. But man, look, anytime you need help, I'm willing to come out there. I don't want no money. I'm willing to come out there. If anybody in Florida want to drive with me, look, we can carpool together for real. Any help you yes, need, sir. I'm coming out. Uh, if you need some shoes for the kids, man, let me know, man. Any any way I can help, you know, some uh, school books, uh, some pencils. You know, I'm not big on the electronics. I want these kids to get back out there, man. Like you said, use yes. their hands, man. Get off these games, like exactly, stuff, man. They. <laughs> They don't even know, man. That stuff not gonna matter. They don't to get you it now. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that saying: when you a boy, you know, you, you play around. But one day, when you become a man, you gotta put that stuff away. Absolutely. You know, the older you, man, it's just important for our black males, man, to, to wake up. Because I'm telling yes, you, it's sir. a gender out here for us. And it in is. The, in, the, in the time we living in is the age of Aquarius, and that and that means everything done in the dark will come to light. And y'all, and, and that and that's why I, and that's why I'm happy I ran into you. Cause that look, look, cause you were supposed to everything, and that's why I'm saying I appreciate it, man. I yes, appreciate sir. it. Keep it going, man. Keep doing what you're doing, and we need more brothers like you with, with, with your rank, with your rank yeah. out there, yeah. who can stand next to a white man and say, "No, I did this." We yeah. need more men to step up like you, man, and, and speak up for us. Give a mm -hmm. give us, man, cause it's it's it's, it's what three hundred million people. I forget how, what's the population of America. But man, imagine how many young men out there like me. Like I said, I'm just a 24 year old black African American. You know, y'all the future, man. Yeah, that's it. But that's what yes, I'm saying, y'all. We got to come together. We got to start mm -hmm. learning. Because while, yep. we, man, man, this, this they, game they, has, they keeping us trapped up into the hip hop. The loot, and that's we, it. We got to be connected to our elders. Listen, my mama used to tell my brothers, all of them that went to prison did not listen to my mama. It was like she could feel something. Yep. Boy, don't go over here today. Don't go. I see the way you look at. Don't do this. And they would not listen. Next day, yep. no 10 years. Next day, no 14 years. Next day, no Can't five. Get it back. Years. Can't get that yeah. time back. Can't get that time. Oh, I should have. The first person they called when they got down there, Mama. Yep. Yep. Should have listened before you got in trouble. 
Yep. Like you said, go outside, man. Do something. Sit down, read a book. Go work on something, man. Go build yep. something. Yes, go sir. create something. Go go join something. Be a part of something, man. It's just mm -hmm. so much out there, man. Anything positive, that's what you need to be doing. But like I said, I'm going to move on, man. I appreciate you. Salute to you, brother. Day, I appreciate that. And uh, everyone out there, have a good day, man. That's it. All right. Bro. Bless you. Man, that was a good conversation. And, this, and that's the thing that he said. Those video games is destroying our children because... These people are smart. They study the kids. They don't want these kids to use. They are afraid of our children. And they got them so wrapped up in these video games, they took the pause button off the game. When I played video games, I could pause the game, go do what my mother wanted me to do, or my brother wanted me to do, or my uncle. I can go outside, rake the yard. My game, when I come back to it, is right where I left it at. And the, the bra holler and these other games, there's no pause button. So they have to leave their friends, leave in the chat. So they feel like, mom, you fucking with me now. I told you, leave me alone, bitch. I seen the little TikTok videos. I be like, damn. My mom would have came in there and caught the little ass across the head with a broom. But hey, teach their own. But th these video games are fucking our children up. I'm sorry, video game companies. Allegedly, y'all destroying these kids. Uh, Eugene, what's up, brother? How you doing? Man, I mean, here another day. Yeah, good, good. I was um listening to what you were saying about Rachel Nichols and how she was uh saying how she supported, you know, the women's movement and Me Too and all that. But then when it comes to Mariah, now she got a problem because mm -hmm. it affects her mm -hmm. and her position. It's similar to what a lot of people are going through right now with these women with the transgender generation, where they're saying, oh. It's not right for them to, you know, run and do track and all that stuff with the girls. But you thought it was cute to let these boys think that they're women. But now that because they have actual aspirations of doing sports and all that, and because they feel they're a woman and you allow them to feel that way, now because your position is threatened, now you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. See, they all think that this stuff is cute and cool until it actually affects them. I agree. You know what I'm saying? So for you to sit there and say, yeah, I support me too. But then when another woman, even if she wasn't black, if she was a white woman, would you still feel the same way? No. Nope. <laughs> or, or would you or would you be like, all right, that's cool. You know, yeah, you can take it. I'm fine. She didn't do that because yeah. she don't believe what she's saying. Right. It's, only, it's like what I keep telling everybody. All this stuff is a fad. All this stuff is a cool thing. When it's cool, everybody wants to be about it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And being like, woke, woke is woke. being woke is fashionable right now. So they don't even know right. what is. They give right. us slogans. Vote, vote or die. These, right. These slogans that mean nothing. Right. And that's what they're doing. Like, I've been reading like all different things that all these people are saying, like, oh, see, this is that woke crowd. That's why this is going on. No, what your problem is, is like you was saying earlier, y'all are comfortable with the way things have been going on. But because the stuff is being exposed on how they're doing people wrong, now you just don't want to make the change mm -hmm. you want to say oh see we wish things was the way it was so then you're about to make america great again bullcrap mm -hmm. which means you want it to be the way it always has and the way it always has has been fake it's not real so you want us to not try to progress and give the facts and the reality to these kids on what life is really about right you want them to live in a fantasy world you know I have, is virtual reality they give them ipads right. Give them exactly. Right out the womb. Exactly. Like my, yeah. I have godchildren. My goddaughter, she plays hockey, and she loves to go outside and play. And when I go and see her, I'm like, "What's wrong?" She'd be looking all sad in the house. She's like, "Don't nobody want to go outside and play no more." I'm like, well, mm -hmm. "What do you mean?" She's like, "My sister, because she has a twin sister, all she does is play on her phone, talking to her friends on the phone. Mm -hmm. My godson, all he wants to do is play video games, but mm -hmm. she actually wants to go out." And do things like how we did growing up. Mm -hmm. You know how it was when we was growing up on a Saturday morning. You getting your butt up and going outside and find something to do. Till the lights the come lights on. Go, to the right, home, exactly. Right. Don't come. <laughs> don't come back into this house until I tell you there's some lunch for you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Stuff like that. They don't do that with these children no more. They allow these games and these celebrities to raise their children, and mm -hmm. then when they go out and do the things that they do, you want to act shocked. Right. Well, you're not. You're not teaching them anything. Who Who's really teaching them? The, the media that's running the celebrities. Right, exactly. So you can't get mad when you're not even in a part of your own child's life. 
I agree with you, my brother. You know what I'm saying? You're allowing all these people to raise your children. Yeah. Like you. Like, like when I was growing up, the girls did each other's hair. The, mm -hmm. older, the older cousins, us older cousins did the little cousins hair. Mm -hmm. You didn't go nowhere and pay no $150 for somebody to, to do your hair. Because there's only a select few that know how to do it now. Right, exactly. It, it, all the stuff that we learned growing up on how to be independent, these kids don't know it. And it's sad mm -hmm. because they're losing the way of being independent. They got to rely on somebody. They got to rely on something. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing that I do appreciate about my goddaughter is that she has drive to want to do more. Mm -hmm. She doesn't just sit on laurels, you know? Yeah. Her brother, he played hockey too. So he had won a championship and she lost hers. So they tried to give her the little trophy. And she did like the little boy on Bad News Bears and was like, I don't want this. You know what I'm saying? I want that. So her dad told her, well, if you want to get that, you got to work hard to get it. You got to get better. And that's what she did. And she won her championship the next year. And you couldn't take that trophy out of her hand because right. she worked for it and she knows how much it took to get it. Let and me ask you this. Uh -huh. Do you think do you think putting coding in schools and trades in school will help the kids to get off the video games and learn to build the game or do the trade? Yes, she actually she's actually in a class with that. <laughs> I went to see her, she had like this little robot that she had to she was telling me she has to code it to do certain things for her class. So mm -hmm. she's actually in a class that, that teaches that, but not mm -hmm. all schools teach that. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because she's in a nicer area, she can get that kind of class. Mm -hmm. But in the other areas, they're not going to have that. You know what I mean? Yes, so I, do. I do. They need to have that everywhere. It should be balanced for everyone. Because what kills me, Kwame, is everybody always says, oh, you know, as far as whites, it's not about race. It's not about race. Okay, so then why do you always ask what race a person is when they apply for a job. What race a person is when they go to try to get a house. What does it matter? If race doesn't matter, why are you asking these things? <laughs> so it should be the same. And it should be the same when it comes to the census. It should just be how many people live in that area. Not mm -hmm. black, white, purple, yellow, green. Mm -hmm. Just how many people live in that area to know how much funding we need for that area. Right. Because if I say there's a million white people over here and a million black people over here, then whites are going to get it before the blacks. Right, because that's right. how because they base it on color, and it's sad. You well, know, I appreciate you stopping by, my brother. Let me get one more person, one or two people on. No problem. Thank you. I appreciate you for putting me on, and I support everything you say. Thank you, sir. Oh, and, I, and I also follow Ticket TV too. That's how I seen you. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's All right, brother. All, All right, right, now. right now. thank you. Uh, we got John uh, Goodwill coming on. What's up, brother? Yes. Yes, sir, brother Grummy. How you doing, man? Good, man. Good. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, you know, I had to come on here, man. I, look, I done got your shirt. I'm living the bus like my own self in my own. <laughs> <life>. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 42, bro. So I, I consider you like my big little brother. But <laughs> what you say, man? Uh, the trade. Now I'm gonna get on the trade real quickly. Now okay. shout out to CBS Chicago Vocational High School. Okay. I'm from I'm from the go. And um, as far as I'm glad that I was able to learn those trades like welding, wood, auto body, all those things that you're saying, I've been resonated that in my mind a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. So I ponder before I recognized that you had had some videos from last year. Mm -hmm. See, I slept. See, but the conscious man has woken. <laughs> so now I'm spreading some of my mama's cooking. Mama's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know, look, I'll tell you, it resonated with me so hard. Like I, I, I've been sitting here thinking about that. All yeah. right. I talk to these young people and I tell them, man, look, pull your damn pants up. You know what that means, right? Right. You know what that means? Now, in real life, they don't want to talk about what's really real. Now, that was a fad back in the 90s, of course. Mm -hmm. We all did it, right? Mm -hmm. But a conscious, an older brother told me, he said, young man, you know when you had your pants down like that, you're inviting another man to you. Right? Yeah, my brother so, told me. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, my thinking is this. If I tell you that, now they wear tight jeans and they got the nervous sag. 
And, and excuse my ladies, no disrespect to your pay. How the fuck you gonna run the rate for the goddamn police, man? I'm from Chicago, man. I trust. <laughs> Shout out to Chicago. <laughs> my man, that's there you go. And, and I support, and I've been showing your shirt. I, I went in the hood. And I'll be out west. I'm shout out to the west side, west side of Chicago. Yeah. And and I go out there and I, I had your shirt on and I had it matching up with my, you know, saying nice little Air Maxes or whatever. You know, I was shy. Yeah. yeah. And uh one of the ladies seen me with the shirt on and she read it. And uh I said, Yeah, turn around and look at the back of bus light. I right. resonate with everything that you say, bro. I know I ain't gonna say I'm, I ain't gonna probably say I'm your biggest supporter. But I am one of your supporters. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you need my services, source anything, bro. And I appreciate that. I, I can put things on out there. I'm a salesman myself. I know how to talk. I okay. know how to talk. So yeah. trust me. I I know some people that it's a small word you may know here. Yeah. I I have family. I used to, I used to come to Chicago. I I know Will Bynum real well. I know uh, Antoine. Yeah. Real well. I used, to, I used to take me out, so I, I love Chicago, boy. Oh yeah, oh, y'all got yeah. a beautiful city. I just what? got scared to come back. <laughs> what? No, don't, don't. Just stay on down there because it, it's too yeah. wild, man. It's too wild. Yeah. All yeah. I say is I'll come down there because my family's down there in Atlanta. Yeah, they on the outskirts. Uh, my mom's in Covington, I believe. I don't know how far that is from you. I've been down there already, yeah. and uh, um. I don't know, man. Like I said, I got a purpose. Like you said, you got to be for some. A man stand for some or fall for anything, man. Yes, he and will. I, I can't fall for the bullshit that Stephen A. Smith. Hey, why was you at them colleges, boy? <laughs> why the fuck was you at them high schools, boy? Stephen Jackson, you double talking motherfucker, you. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. Look, I, I, I'll, be, I'll be up in this motherfucker. I'll be screaming. Be like, Why you doing all that? Man. <laughs> man, that's man. Look, hey, it is, it is other black men that talk just like you. Like I you try to tell them. Oh, I talk, oh, oh, you can look at me and tell, look, I'm oh, me yeah. and brothers, but we brothers from another mother. You feel yeah, me? I'll be around guys that talk. I'd be like, what y'all mean guys don't talk like this? They just don't do it in front of y'all. Because you they gotta think though, old school be old school, be certain things don't have to be. I don't have to just because I don't have a platform like you do per yeah. se. That don't yeah. mean that message still ain't getting out though. You feel what exactly. I'm saying? So exactly you you I'm just put like this. I'm a look guy, but if I could get on there and say and drop some gems to you. Because you can learn from me just as much as I can learn from you. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? And so we here now. And we here now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. And I'm so happy, man. I'm, I'm happy for your for, for what you're doing. And like I said, if you need to use me, I give you my email address. Uh, I say it real quick: John Goodwill thirty six at gmail dot com. Okay. All you got to do. And 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 I and I send some shoes. Now you just gotta tell me what size. I will donate, and you can send me your PO box. I uh, yeah, I'll give you my PO box. Uh, I have okay. it in the description box. I'll put it back in there. And you okay. said gmail.com at, at gmail.com. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the PO box in there. I think it's a six two five Palmetto Drive. I thought I put it in the description box already, but I didn't. Man, I'm like you, Kwame. All this technology shit, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm ready to go outside right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hey, I know, man, I know some other people, man. But like I say, man, I would love to have a conversation with you behind the scenes, though. Actually, to okay. be honest with you, whenever you got time, bro, I know you're a busy guy. And I'm busy too, to be honest with you. After I get through talking, I'm gonna get my day started, most definitely. Okay, brother. You be good, man. We'll we'll be in touch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to Chicago. All right, brother. Uh we got uh Tommy B. What's up, brother? I can't hear you, bro. I'm mute your mic. Oh, what did I just do? Hello? Can't hear you.
Can't hear you. We're going to go to somebody else real quick. What's up, brother? Good day, brother Kwame. How you doing today, sir? Good, 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 good. That's what's up. Yo, I remember when you first, like, was getting drafted. And your picture used to be in the paper, like, every day as they was doing their they little agenda on you and everything. But I used to look at your face. I used to be like, this dude seemed like a warrior. Like, a, like he was mad strong. In your eyes, it was, like, mad strong. And I, when you speak of, when you speak of the get, go along, get along game and how you distinguish yourself from the, along the lines of integrity, I could see that back then is what I'm trying to say. I could see that back then. And I was, I'm 50 years old. So I'm like, was 30 back then. And I was like, this dude is, he reminds me of myself as like, I'm not part of the get a go along, get along game. Moving forward, since you came out and, and these dudes was talking about you, and I'm glad you laying the hammer and throw on them and shit like that. Once, since you have done that, I just want to say thank you because You've done that across the whole nation, and now brothers like myself can walk around with a little bit more confidence. Mm -hmm. And I want to say thank you for that. And on the flip side of that, you've also prepared other people for people like myself with confidence to come out and behave with confidence. Mm -hmm. So on a twofold, I just want to say thank you for those two things personally. And I just want uh, my favorite one of my favorite podcasts is uh, Craig Facts. And I, the fans at Craig Facts have been powwowing on trying to get you to, to come out there. So I just want to put my vote to the Craig Facts. <laughs> I would love to see, me personally, I can't speak for everyone, but me personally, I would love to see you strong brothers get together and just kick the Willie Bobo. You know what I mean? And be, okay. but, but other than that, thank you for letting me get on, sir. And thank you for being yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Salute to you, my brother. Let me see if we can get uh, brother man back here. You get your sound right, brother? Tommy. Can't hear nothing. Hey. I'll leave you in the queue, uh, queue. Let me get a young lady up here. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good, good. I don't want to stay on long, but I just wanted to say that I really appreciate your content and God bless you and just continue to do the good work. for the Thank you so much. And, um, you know, you got my vote. <laughs> I appreciate that. Sorry, but um, I didn't want to stay on long. I just wanted to say God bless you. And right, like I listen to you every morning. You know, I'll be up, you know getting my girls off to school and stuff and just listening to your uh, your content. So I appreciate you. Well, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to uh, Brother Truth. What's Hello? up, bro? How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good, good. All right. So I just wanted to come on here real quick. I actually have a proposition for you. Mm -hmm. uh oh <laughs> to do a collaboration with you. So, so I can't I can't hear you. First. So my name is it's Christian. Breaking up a little bit. Hold on, it's breaking up. There it is. It we better now? You. Yeah. I'm good. Okay, mm -hmm. so my name is Christian the Truth the Jones. I'm an international certified Les Brown speaker, international best selling author, CEO of The Truth Speaks. And I show people how to invest in day trade in the stock market. And I would actually love to do a collaboration with you with teaching young black men or my peers how to learn how to invest in the stock market and begin making money, especially now with the college athletes being able to make money off their name, image, and likeness. The reason mm -hmm. I was looking to collaborate with you specifically is because I know you are an athlete. And so my main target audience is professional college, high school level athletes that are black, of course, because I know a lot of them, especially once they leave the league, Goldberg, I believe is like 75%. And so I would love to do it. I think it might be higher than that now. Crazy. So I would just love to do a collaboration with you with just helping them and I know just using your platform and helping them learn how to get into this investment game. Because I know for me personally, as far as the black community goes overall, I believe the biggest things that we have, but that we don't have actually, is we're not in the stock market really. We're not really into investing because I believe that's one of the missing components and the missing keys besides unity, besides family, besides discipline. That's one of the missing keys that are coming to our community because I see it this way. 
So I'm an investor in the stock market, right? And specifically, I'm a used business owner. I believe you're a business owner yourself, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So let's say we just take $500, right? We got $500 from our business. We go ahead, open up a brokerage account and put it into our account. So as a business owner, I go ahead. I'm already learning how to invest. I'm already learning how to trade. I go ahead and turn that $500 into, let's say we double it, we turn it into $1,000. So now I can take half of that. I can take my initial investment out of 500. So I'm still just playing with house money. So if I were to blow my account, it, I'll be all right still. So that's a possibility. Or I can take, let's say $750. So I take some profit out as well, put that back into my business. And now I have even more money and capital for my business. Now that I can use this capital, I can continue to grow and expand my business. And so these are, of course, black business owners doing this and formerly small business owners that were doing this. So now as they continue to grow and expand their business, uh, what does every expanding business need? Employees. Where do you get them employees from? The black community. So now you're hiring the people that not everybody, of course, can be a business owner, athlete, all of that. So now you're hiring people from the community and you're keeping the money in the community as well by using a simple tool as just investing in the stock market or investing in crypto or just having some type of investment that will allow you to continue to flip and multiply your capital. So let me ask you this. What do you yes, say sir. to the people that are, you know, I know some backwood country folk. And they're not going to trust anybody with their money. I know some people that still put their money in the ground. And uh, <laughs> so what do you say for the people who have like parents like that, that just believe in trades? What would you what would you think make a better impact on the children learning stocks or learning about trades and learning coding? I would definitely say learning trades and coding, because yeah. I know personally that's something I, I'm still not even taught or hip to to this day. And so I would definitely start off with the trade and coding and then getting into the, the stock, stock market, market eventually. Okay. Most definitely. Yeah. So I tell you what, email me at support at buslife.com. Gotcha. And then uh, I'm going to I'm going to be getting a phone, another phone here shortly. And then I'll be dropping that number in the uh, description box for everybody to call it. It'll be only for that purpose. But I'd rather you text text me and then I'll get back to you uh, in the order. And that's what I'll do when I'm not online and when I'm not outside. So support uh, support buslife.com support at buslife.com support at buslife.com. Got it. Yes, Thank sir. you. All right, brother. Um. I got uh, Shamira. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So I'm here in Brunswick. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that I am here. I've always supported you from day one, 2001. You from, you from Brunswick, Georgia? Or Brunswick? Yes, sir. Oh, Brunswick, hey, Georgia. girl. Hey, oh, hey. Girl. How you doing? What's going on with you? I'm originally from McIntosh, but yeah, I'm in Brunswick. Okay. Um, but um, so I've well, supported you from day event, one. Though, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I'll be there to give exclusive footage to a uh, shout okay. out to Self Talk Sino. Yes. Yep. Um, but I've supported you day one. We met at a uh, Bourbon Street way back in the day. You cool as a fan. <laughs> shout out to uh, you supporting Rap Happy. Yep. And feeding them young folk. Um, Don't tell them that I be feeding these kids. Don't be telling them that. Oh, yeah, but you know what I mean. See, <laughs> we folk crazy out in these streets. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm in the background. I support you 100%. Um, and I'm here to offer, if you need, secretarial services. So oh, that I, I know that. Um, run, up I will me, run up on me when we get to the event. We're going to get the uh, date set. And uh, I definitely need some help, boy, because Lord have mercy, Jesus. Yeah, because I know you need to focus more on what you're doing. And I see that you, you know, trying to multitask, and I'm just here to um, support. Screw all those yeah, other. Trying folks to hold in the road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but that's all I wanted to say. Just letting you know you got support from the WIC. Much love, and to people that's trying to tell you how to do what you do. Where was y'all 20 years ago? They were probably okay. at them colleges laughing with Stephen A. Facts. Big facts. <laughs> Love you, Kwame, my Geechee fam. Stay Appreciate up. that. All right. See, I got love out here in these streets. Boy, y'all been talking about me, but I get, the streets give me real love. And I ain't talking about the streets like the gangster streets. I'm talking about the people. I like the people. What's up, brother? What's going on, Kwame? How you doing, man? Doing good. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about... Um, the coding idea that you had um that's something that i've kind of been on for like years and mm -hmm. um just like i tell like a lot of the people around me i'm like you might want to learn how technology first of all works because it controls as we can see now 
you know, our finances, mm-hmm. um, you know, our platforms that we use. It, control, it controls basically 100 percent of the world. Mm-hmm. And it's the language that the computer speaks. So why right. wouldn't you, why would you not want to learn how something is operating your day to day life? Because so, that'll um, be the cure. <laughs> they don't want to give us the cure. They want to keep uh, giving us the medicine. Yeah, if we learn coding and trades, we the, we'd be cured. There's a lot of money in our destruction. Yeah, and um, just to let you know, I sent you an email last night um about okay. a fitness idea that I have. Um, okay. I do have a platform for fitness myself. It's called Divine Energy Fitness. I've okay. been building it for about the last five years. Um, I'm I'm about twelve to fifteen years in as a personal trainer, and okay. um, that's something that I used to talk to a lot of my parent clients about um, their kids not having that same um, knowledge and the same oh. internet. Like, okay. like growing up, um, I really wasn't good at sports and I was in front of the computer a lot, but when I was in front of the computer, all I did was research. So mm-hmm. I wanted to be able to play sports. So that's how I guess the fitness came about because that's all I would do all day is watch you know videos of my favorite football players, basketball players, shout mm-hmm. out to Iverson because I'm from Virginia. But mm-hmm. um, that grew into a passion of mine. And that's something that I feel, um, you know, the youth, the youth need right now because they're in the house. Um, they don't know what to do. They want to be able to go outside. And even if they go outside, they're hot, they're sweaty. Uh-oh. Or hydration. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they go out and they play these sports and the coaches don't even know how to teach them basic nutritional understanding. And to mm-hmm. me, um, that's blasphemy because how can we say that we're fully invested in them, but we're not looking 10 years down the road as far as like their health issues concerned and, you know, just things of that nature. I feel like the two go hand in hand when it comes to technology and taking mm-hmm. care of yourself, because a lot of people don't understand a lot of, a lot of these mental health issues uh, stem from being in front of technology so long, like it's literally draining us and we don't, we don't understand how to take that control back for ourselves to be able to say, I had a good experience in front of the computer versus, man, I was on Facebook and I saw some BS I didn't like. <laughs> now I'm going to go over here and have this bag of potato chips because I want to, <laughs> I need that hit of dopamine, you know, like yeah. it, it, it's, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah. And I feel like um, your platform is the future of the conversations that our communities do need to have. And I really appreciate a lot of what you're doing. Cause like I was seeing your name a few months ago on, on social media, but it was a lot of bad stuff. And I'm one of those type of people, mm-hmm. like once I see something negative and I have a pretty big following on Twitter too. So like, I see a lot of stuff, but I don't comment on it. And I kept seeing your name. Then I'm at work one day and um, one of my coworkers, he brought up your name and I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going on break right now. I need to go watch one of his videos. He like, yeah, Doug, get on it. So I started watching your videos and I'm like, man, I hope I get to talk to this dude one day. So yeah. it's definitely a pleasure right now to uh, man, be able I to you know, it, speak with you, man. Yes, sir. Pleasure all mine, man. It's it's about sharing ideals, man. I got a cousin named Antoine. He has a he does what you're doing. He has a fitness thing called I'm a Beast Fitness. Oh, where so I'm looking I need, up. Yeah, I need to find your email. Uh, he's down in Dallas, Texas. So you guys, okay. Should know, yeah. So you know it's a small world but we all got to link who we know with who we know and you know see what happens so definitely all right brother all right thank Respect you Kwame. my man yes sir uh who we got let me get a young lady on hey how you doing miss d hey nephew hey how you Hi. doing <laughs> good to see uh, you i mean i want to say brother so proud of you thank you so, uh, uh oh, we're breaking up. We're breaking up a little bit. Can you hear me? Nah, I can't. We can't. Okay, can you there we go. Oh, yeah, no. We can hear you now. Okay. Okay, I'm with you. We're kind of like elder sister. And brother, everything you say, mm-hmm. I co sign. You know what I'm saying? You talk right. Um, I mean, I was raised by a Black Panther. God bless my father <laughs> in heaven. Uh, raised strong. So, brother, everything you said is on point. I've been woke since I was five, so I'm with you on everything you said. Uh, but I had, I had a quick comment, Kwame. I wanted to say, how do you rally the brothers, the black and brown brothers, and the sisters from taking that support, that streaming dollar, uh, away from networks like ESPN, away from uh, places like where lesser charge is, from the Breakfast Club? How do you rally that support to get them to stop 
on those platforms and go to a platform that are positively representing the athletes, the people that are out there doing things for the community. And I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the answer. Um, that's what we got to start doing. Like, I'm going to start talking to more of the positive uh, black folks that's just out there. Like, I was on um, Tyrone Nesby. He's starting up a little sports channel. So I went on his Instagram and his channel the other day while at Home Depot. So it just it's bringing more people to his page to hear how he think about sports. And we all just need to link and just start going on each other's pages and talk and bringing our subscribers to the other person's page and, you know, see what happens. Well, because I wanted to say, Cormac, it, it, it disheartens me when all of the narrative, and we know the media, we know all these messages on social media and the music. I've been putting this in your chat for the longest. Those people are what's driving these negative messages in our community. And people like myself, you, and many multiple others are out there trying to cut that messaging off. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm in my 50s, Kwame, mm -hmm. and it's like I've never supported that trash because I am a mother. Mm -hmm. and when you get to the brain, whatever message you put, that's what you're going to cultivate and grow. So thank you for uh, linking up with those people so we can go follow those platforms. Because the statistics I heard, the statistics were that the majority of the viewership of ESPN was uh, black men that are either unemployed, and I know that also brothers that work shift work, they come mm -hmm. watching stuff like Sports Center and things like that. So mm -hmm. we need to draw these brothers, and they need to say no. Like yeah. when camp took a knee, like that year when Kaepernick took a knee, I mean, people were trying to encourage the brothers. Do not watch the NFL. Do not watch any game this year to support this. And it was like, just hard. They don't know what else to do without that. It's like the kids are trained to have the phone. Adults are too. Um, we got to just, we got to be the one talking. Instead of being the one just holding the phone, get in the game. Start a YouTube channel. Start going on live at the same time as a, your favorite show. So you'll be doing something. And then hopefully people will be talking to you. And that's how you take the views away from them. Absolutely. Well, I wanted to give a plug for myself. I am a registered nurse. Uh, okay. I'm a life I'm a registered nurse, a life and relationship coach, and uh, I'm out there helping people break out of their patterns in their mind about, you know, traumatic past and coming out of those those areas that keep them found, like community mindsets, environmental mindsets. So I do coaching as well as I'm a health coach. So I just want to put that out there. And can I get my website? Go ahead. It's yourjourneycoaches.com. Yourjourneycoaches.com, and I'm Coach D. Odetta. So thank you so much, Kwame. God bless you, brother, and keep doing what you're doing. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming by. Yes, sir. Uh, who we got right here? I can't see nobody. What is this? Kaya NY07? Let me see. Hey. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. How are you, brother Kwame Brown? All right, I'm doing great. <laughs> Very Me nice. Too. Um, yeah. I was long. <clears throat> I like Sage. That's why I'm burning, brother, on here. Okay. Um, um, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, I don't want to repeat too much. Um, you're you're making a great difference. You came in and you're you're coming and taking people by storm. We appreciate you so much. Um, I'm fairly new on YouTube. Um, I came here through education and music. But mm -hmm. I want to get right into what's going on right now. What we need so much of um, is more um, Black empowerment specifically. Um, and you've been such a force in that. And I honestly can't believe I'm sitting here talking right now, but I'm going to just go with the spirit. Uh, I was watching last night, um, and you, you're just awesome. Uh, Judge Joe Brown was on the show prior to that, and I just salute real men like you. You exist. There's so many. Um, it's enough of the suppression and we need more um, talking. And I apologize, my camera's all over in China. No, you good. Try to, okay. Uh, um, and you speak on um, uh, uh, coding, which is very important. Libraries do coding, but maybe that can also be a step for us to get in for the kids with the coding. Um, coding mm -hmm. has to do with gaming. Kids love gaming. That's how we're getting them in with the coding in the local libraries. Um, okay. I didn't know that. So all local libraries do that? Not, oh, all, but not all, but with you talking of this, maybe we mm -hmm. can get even more. So me listening okay. to you in this, I'm going to use this 
and bring mm -hmm. it to some of the libraries too. Because yes, we just started a couple of years ago. So we really appreciate this. Um, and even okay. a, a popular game like Minecraft, a lot of kids okay. play Minecraft. They're mining, but they're using natural resources and learning how it works and how you build. Mm -hmm. We can never not have enough plumbers, electricians, um, the, the HVAC, heating, ventilation, what is it, air conditioning. Um, you can never frown upon something that's always needed. Maybe you don't want to do it in, as a profession, but like Brother Kwame is saying, you can use and apply it in your life. They're, ne they're necessary skills that mm -hmm. men before us used, and that's yep. all we had. We didn't have nothing that we have now, and they yep. made it happen. So imagine yep. what we can do. <laughs> so exactly. I thank you so much for that. Um, and uh, you, uh, I'm sorry. Again, I'm Kai. I'm Kai and Y007. Um, I'm fairly new on here, but I'm about empowerment and unity. We are not perfect, but we have to get rid of some of the extra rhetoric and just stay focused on what's going on. But I believe in building together. We're not going to always get along. Kwame Brown has brought a lot of attention to go along things and stuff like that. I'm a woman that's my own island, so I'm good. Um, people have come against Man, me recently. Shout out to and you. I don't know why. Thank you. Um, Cause I feel like sometimes you feel small, but sometimes you're stronger than that BS army that's coming against you for no reason. It's just an right. obstacle to kind of get out the way and move mm -hmm. forward to do what we need to do. And especially as black people, particularly, I am just a force for them. There's other cultures out here. We can get together at some point too. And I, I believe that, but I do strongly believe that we do have to put ourselves first more often and be there for one another. Mm -hmm. We can't have person out matches, death matches. That's a little easy. Death mm -hmm. is already waiting for you. We want to live more healthier lives. And I mm -hmm. thank you for giving that attention here. Um, I, if I could just possibly say, because how do you feel about too with healing and healing of people? Like our people, we need some healing too. There's mm -hmm. a war going, we got to fight it, but I do believe in healing. And part of what brought me um, closer with YouTube, and you can tell me how you feel. Um, may, I, may I drop a name? Um, or, okay. D. Durrell. He's like a brother of mine from another mother. Um, he's a mental health therapist here on YouTube. His channel is D Durrell Life Solutions. Um, Cause I feel like mental health is so much that we need and we kind of didn't think we needed it, but get, get, you know, if you need help, we have to get the help. Um, suicide rate is on a high. Um, depression has been on a high level, especially in the uh, year last year of 2020. And if you look at NASA and just take a look at what's going on in the atmosphere, not just what's going on here on Earth, there's something going on. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, though. Tap in. I'm here. If some, if I could possibly help in any kind of way, I'm here to be used. I'm not here to be abused. I'm not here for some of the things I've already went through, but I have mm -hmm. to learn my voice and speak up more and stop being so scary. Maybe right. there's some people out there, too, that feel like, oh, nobody's going to listen. Nobody's going to care. You have something in you that's moving you. The time is now. The earth is moving faster than it ever has before. Mm -hmm. There's stuff going on and we have to be aware of it and, and take notice to it. Um, so I just really appreciate everything that you've been doing. Um, YouTube is a huge platform. There's plenty of room for all of us. Kwame yeah. Brown is a man. He can't do everything, even though I know he wants to. I know. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> well, I, I know you, I but you, want, you got a heart to do. <laughs> I don't want we need problem. more people. We need more people. And it would just be great to see you again. And maybe down the line, even if we just had time or it because you open up your panel, I'm just gonna just wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Um there's there's a there's a brother out here too that's been doing things for quite some time. He's a journalist as well. He's a strong, no nonsense, real brother. Um, his mm -hmm. channel is RBR Network. And it's RBR a place Network. where you come. Yes. Um it goes it stands for Real Brother Radio. And we mm -hmm. just need that have that passion and things to where we can try to get things done, but have an understanding of your environment and your surroundings so that you can stay alive. There are people that want to conquer and destroy. Mm -hmm. The ones that need to go are going. The atmosphere has been taking care of them, whether I realize it or not. But mm -hmm. it's up to us, I feel like, to still unite, but stay focused and know what we got to do out here. So I, I, I just thank you so much. And um, you, you shouted out um, people and they they appreciate you so much. You shouted out another brother, um, sinful to pee, and you you um and I I remember I commented right after you said that because he didn't catch it right away, and I went and commented on his page and he he didn't even realize till I did that. He said thank you. I didn't even realize that yet. And people were coming over like Kwame sent me. Kwame sent me. I said see them subs gonna go up, and you're you're so. That's what it's about. about though. Like a lot of people, a lot of people seem to think that YouTube is 
like the streets or something. You got to hate on somebody to get on. Like, no, if you if you collaborate and, and people like your content and you piece up with another brother, that's that's how you do it. And sometimes I think the younger guys, even now, some of the older guys are doing it like if a guy that's bigger than them don't reach out to them right away, they start. OK, well, I'll get the algorithms by hating on the guy. And that to me is corny. That just causes uh, confusion. That ain't helping that. So yeah. that's I don't I don't like that lane. I ain't gonna get in that lane. Right. So, Absolutely. You're yeah. doing so so great. Thank you so much. One last thing. I had family members that actually made the news yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, in upstate New York, they're looking into things where coal burning has possibly been linked to cancer, and mm -hmm. I have family members um, that have passed away early and they're trying to possibly make a link between some of these steaming areas that seem to be located in the inner community and where people of color or black people live, but it can impact your health. So just stay where, uh, aware of what's going on in your health. If y'all want to mm -hmm. check it out, it's, um, News Channel 13 is upstate New York. And I just appreciate y'all. There's so much going on and it's a movement. Join in or you can stay by the sidelines, but mm -hmm. you're going to join in. Yeah, they're going to be on the wrong side of history, but God bless you, my sister. Have a great day. Thank you so much. You too. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what we got? Tommy. You back? You get it right? I, yeah, I get it right. Okay, you got it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, bro, man? Hey, what's going on, I've been brother? checking you out for a month, man. For a month, man. And yeah, It's been that long. <laughs> that long. Stay on day. Here. Man, let's see, be studio gangster. Well, anyway, <laughs> hey, Easy E said it best, did he? Studio gangster. Hey, <laughs> CB4, y'all gave him the right. That's the one spot. I caught more fish with backbone than that Negro guy. But you, you know, uh, I'm just saying this. You, you, you real man. Hey, I just respect you, man. And the things you say about coding, about these schools. When I was in school, we had automotives, machine yep. shop, electronics, a sheet metal worker, and all that. And then my father, he raised me to do house, how to fix up houses and stuff. And it's, he had me out in the yard. I get on my lawn more now, John Deere, and I be cruising on it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Green Yankers is the place to be. Hey, that's who I am. You did, but I be just having a good time, man. But what you telling us about our youth? These videos, all these rappers, and instead of doing positive and doing a lot of positive stuff, they out there promoting this killing, and we don't need that. Our kids are seeing this, and it, it's killing us, man. Mm -hmm. And Anybody that hurts a child, man, I, I got to get with them. You know, yeah. uh, I, I'm I, I'm a veteran, man. I, I was in the military for a while. Thank you for and, your service, bro. Yes, sir. And I, and what I do, I work with veterans yeah. and civilians mm -hmm. uh, as a peer support, and mm -hmm. that is where a, a person that been through the struggles but has come out. I was part of the problem, but now I'm part of the solution. Mm -hmm. You know, I work with individuals to to help them enrich their lives I in whole health or coaching. And um, it's a it's a pleasure for me, man. It's a is a is a, a love that I have, man. And when I hear you coming forward and, and, and doing the things that you're doing, preaching righteousness and and people been hating on you. And for what, man? Well, it's not about you, hey, you it's about algorithms. It, it, I know, it, 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 I hate fake folks. I, you know, I, you know, and CB4 curly with the good hair, or uh, what you call it, Becky with the good hair. <laughs> hey, jumping fences. <laughs> hey man, he hey, wide open. I think I, I, he could have walked through. They but say he, he stuck all the way around the back of his own house. He went oh, around man. the back. Oh, he a sucker. <laughs> hey, but yeah, uh, but it's real. I just enjoy you, man. Keep you got some back. You you got some backup. I want you to know. I appreciate it, my brother. Uh, you know, we us veterans, we with you, we riding with you, man. And I just want you to know I've been waiting. I'm glad God allowed me to get this right. Because I ain't no good with this stuff, but hey, I'm I'm grateful. I'm learning too. <laughs> I'm grateful, 
to uh I got a couple of questions really. Okay. Uh St Stephen A, why was you at them colleges, boy? <laughs> I'm a civilian. I want to know why. I'm not, I don't got no uh, platform. I don't need no platform. I'm coming at you as a regular Joe, and I want to know why was you at them high schools, boy? <laughs> he ain't going to answer that question. Hey, I hey, can, we know why, though. I know why. Hey, and one last thing, man. Those bobbleheads. How can I get one of those bobbleheads, man? Oh, uh, I'm trying to get that, that company that made them, uh, McFarland. Uh, they're no longer in business. So I hopefully the the company that can make them now will email me. We can do a little NFT or something. We can make something happen. I, I would love that, man. I would like to get one of those, and I'm I'm getting a jersey, man. <laughs> All right, brother. All right. I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Who is this? The real go along, get along game. Oh man, I can't let you in. I'm scared of you. Uh, let me get uh, a, a young lady in. How you doing, ma'am? Hey, how you doing, Kwame? I'm doing all right. Having a good time talking to y'all. I see. I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for thank bringing you. awareness. We needed this for so long. These fools out here have gone crazy. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the reality. Mm -hmm. And like this was said. Uh, before, you know, we are all in this together. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I just wanted to get on here and say thank you. And thank we are you. Very thank you for listening. Very Man, appreciative. It, it's going to take women. It's going to take women like you to help out because we've been we've been indoctrinated to listen more towards women. Even me, you know, I have my mom, but you know, I had some strong men around me, so I'm not sensitive to men uh, talking to me. But majority of us. We're going to take marching orders from you women. So we're going to need women like you to get on board and start preaching uh, the gospel to these kids because they'll listen. Absolutely. Listen. It's been a long time coming. A long okay. time coming. And I'm going to tell you one thing. We also want to know, Stephen A. Smith, how were you at the <laughs> colleges, boy? I want to know, too. Boy, why you was at the Stephen A. What you, you doing at you the know. The people have spoken. We want to know. You know what? Let me bring about three or four people on the panel at the same time and everybody asked. Man, I was a boy at New College. Oh, man, I'm in the hey, building. Let's do it at the same time. I'm in the building. <laughs> hey, let's do it at the same time. Stephen what? A. Why was you at the college? college? <laughs> hey. Stephen A. Kwame. Kwame, man. It's all right. Crazy. Thank you, my sister. You at those high school boys. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, we're gonna start at the top. The young man, uh, okay. I don't know how to say his name. Are you on, bro? You got your sound on? Exclusive. Exclusive. How you doing? Yeah, you I go got first. my sound on. I, I hear you. Go hey, ahead. You hey, go first. How you doing? Can you hear me? Good, good, good. Yes, sir. One of the things I wanted to talk about was Rachel Nichols and diversity and qualifications. Okay. I did listen to her audio leak, and what I was hearing was her talking about adversity what mm -hmm. espn was experiencing as far as pressure to get more i guess african americans or blacks into certain positions i did listen to brother uh Caracino for life mm -hmm. where he was talking about it seems like lebron james may have had something to do with that i'm not certain but from what i'm gathering it seemed like LeBron James maybe wanted to move Maria Taylor into that position. And me being a worker, Brother Kwame, one of the things I know is if you've been doing the job for so long, take race out of it, and they bring somebody else in to replace that job, you or replace you, you will have a problem. I see it every day where these companies are bringing in individuals over people who have been there and promoting them as supervisors. So I took the race issue out of that, and that's the perspective that I looked at that. Bill Cosby. Well, Bill hold on, Cosby let me respond. Let me, let me respond. let me respond to that real quick. Um, I, I disagree because there's young guys that came in the league and I acted as an elder, which I was supposed to. So I nurtured that young talent and I showed them the do's and the don'ts and the things that worked for me and the things that didn't. Because ESPN is supposed to be a team and they fought for this okay. equality. 
And Rachel Nichols is not in position when she's connected to Diane Sawyer, when she's connected to her husband, uh, which were, you know, they're, they're powerful people. So if anybody got a leg up, it's her. But what I've heard about Miss Maria is that she's on all these different shows while she's making less money. She's doing football. She's doing this. She's doing that. So what I got from it is that she's proven that she's earned the job. And you already offered her allegedly five million dollars. She didn't take it because I feel like she felt like yeah, the amount of work. She, right. Yeah. The, no, she yeah. She turned it down for a reason. She turned it down because of the amount of the work well, that she's it? doing. Hold on one second. She turned it down because the amount of work that she's doing rivals her male counterparts. And she can see what that number is. It's about the work. It's not about the race. They made it about race. She didn't say I'm black and I'm a woman. She said, I'm working on this show, that show, this show. Pay me what you're paying this person, allegedly. I agree with what you're saying. If it's about the money. But what right. does the NBA finals have to do with the money? It seems because like people are trying to conflate two and both of them in here, bro. The NBA finals makes a lot of money. That's that's one of the highest growth. It's all about the money. You got to have Rachel Nichols is starting to realize these are young, beautiful black women. And even if they were young, beautiful white women, the young always replace the old. It's too many older people that don't want to move out of the way. Everybody has their time. When you're that pretty girl that got stood in line but didn't have to stand in line, you didn't complain when you was walking past 10, 12 other girls in line. Now that you're that woman that you need a little girl, you got to stand in line. You want to complain saying, why them bitches get to go before me? That's not the way life works. But we got to stop point. complaining. But that's, my, but that's uh, my point, Brother Kwame. You just stated my point. Here's a position. I don't care how old she is that's been in her position for X amount of number of years. What does that mean? I don't care if it's a young person, beautiful. I'm saying that if I've been in position for years you're bringing somebody whether they young old black or white to replace me for what i've been doing i'm gonna have an issue if the younger person so I'm even gonna if have the, an issue so what you're saying is just because of time it doesn't even matter if that, that younger person been doing a huh well that's the problem unions, unions every, i said that's the problem when you have unions because unions, everything is about seniority. It's not about qualification so much. It's about seniority. And what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to ask you is, if what you're saying is, okay. if you've been doing a job for so long that a younger person can't come in and do a better job, and that means they that because you've been doing it so long that younger person don't deserve it if they're better than you. I'm not saying it in that context. I'm just saying it as a human being, how I would feel. How oh. I would feel as a human being. That's why I said I'm taking all that other conflated stuff because things are getting mixed up because at one point it's about, well, she did she was not going to do the NBA finals because they wasn't going to give her $5 million or what she complained about her work ethic and the hard work she put in, no matter what she was doing, I should be getting five million instead of one million for doing uh, baseball, for doing football, for doing soccer. I understand all of that, but then it's becoming, as like I said, listening to Sister Nichols, uh, whether she white, black or not. What I was hearing that ain't her your saying sister. was, "Listen, uh, not brother, your sister. Tommy, I don't." I don't mean sister in the con. First off, I'm, my last name is Muhammad. So when I usually address people, I don't care what color they are or where they come from. I go, well, I call her Miss Nichols for your platform instead of Sister Nichols, just like I would say Sister Taylor. So my whole point, Brother Kwame, is that as a human being with feelings, I understand the qualifications. But as a person who's been doing a job that I love so much, like a Stephen A. Smith, a job that I love so much, and boy, why was you at those colleges? And boy, why was you at those high schools? I'm going to have a problem.
But I understand, and like you said, we agree to disagree about Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was not attacked because he was trying to purchase network. Bill Cosby was attacked because on June 9th, 2013, Brother Bill wrote an op-ed in the New Post saying that more people would be like black Muslims. When he made that comment, Breitbart News, Steve Bannon, the guy that hanged with Trump, and I am a Trump supporter, and I don't mean to say that because I don't want to get down toe up, but Breitbart News reposted Bill Cosby's op-ed and made it as if Bill Cosby was saying all Americans should be Muslims. Sean Hannity and a brother by the name of Alan West picked up that topic and reposted it. And Sean Hannity on Fox News made a post that Bill Cosby causes a stir over his pro-Muslim. And at the time of Sean Hannity, if you remember Jihadi John on YouTube chopping off heads, the Me Too and everything was going on at that time, a new DA came into office elected and they went after bill cosby for a case andrea constant case criminal case was dismissed against bill cosby in 2004. she ended up filing a civil suit in 2005 where bill cosby had to give the deposition uh honorable judge joe brown was talking about that where he talked about yes i did give women drugs well, but well, well, we can't we, we we can't say what's in a deposition that they, we didn't read so we we can't do well, that i read but, the uh, uh, deposition because brother it's the deposition that i can't think of the brother's channel but they do have the deposition posted up as far as where the prosecutor in pennsylvania montgomery pennsylvania well, they just they just proved that the prosecutor they just proved that the prosecutor and the judge were golf buddies allegedly, and they had some type of ties against Bill. So we can't speak so emphatically. Of, hold on, hold on. We can't okay. speak so emphatically about a guy who, through the legal process, is now out of jail. So it's not about feelings. I noticed you use the words feelings several times to make a point. And as yeah, a man, okay. as a man, as a man, I don't feel. I gotta know. And you so do have I, feelings. you was talking about hold your on. baby mama no, 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 sending no, no, the police no, to your house. No, 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 that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. I don't feel when it comes to business and the things that we were discussing. I never said I don't have feelings. Don't do that. And I didn't cut you off not one time. So it seems like you here to push an agenda. Are you kidding to Stephen Jackson? Because you said you was Muslim. Because you're getting way too aggressive towards one side of things to be so unbiased because that's a little weird to me but <clears throat> a man don't feel they know when we're speaking about a topic feelings should not come up you either know or you don't know and you don't know all the things you're saying but you feel like saying them and you're framing it in a way hold on hold on you're framing it in a way as if it's a fact but this man is out of prison for a reason and it's for a factual reason and so it's not about feelings. And that young lady can talk about how much money she deserves based on factual things and not how she feel. So I got to disagree with you, but I want to move on to the next caller, my brother. Go ahead, bro. Please call me. How you doing, brother? How you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. I, just I hope you don't feel you. too. <laughs> uh, <what's>, uh, <laughs> I just I just want to say thank you first of all for the great content. I uh, every morning I, at night I, I watch and tune in and uh, just to say thank you. Yes, and uh, I wanted to talk on the point about trades. I actually got into trades. I went I did a electrical right out of high school. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a point like it's like it's actually like a great asset like to have like just great skill. You learn like great life skills. Mm -hmm. Being confident to way like you you like just job situation like. You feel like if I were to lose a job today, I can literally walk over just the all those different people, right? So, like yep. just that, like it gives you confidence, job work, even mm -hmm. even like when you are working, like oh, like you know what? Like as long as I'm on my job, as long as I'm on my grind, I don't have to worry about losing my job, kind of thing, right? So, mm -hmm. job security, like you no know, robot is gonna go install lights, <laughs> right? <laughs> I got, I got a robot to come install lights in my house, right? So yeah. It's that's what the dude said. That's what the dude said last night. He said everything is going to the robotic. I'm like, what? Are you an idiot? That's why I was talking about trading in code. You can build a damn robot. 
Exactly. That's what you want to do. It's one thing to be woke and think and think about all these stuff, conspiracy theories, but I mean robots, but no one's sending no robots to come build your house. So like right. as long as we keep that in mind, especially young guys, we, we you know, like you said, nobody plays these days. Like growing up in the streets, like I wanted to like hands on, like work with I wanted yep. to learn how light work, right? So I wanted to fix stuff in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, just growing because like my brothers were into that stuff growing up as well. So like but nowadays, kids don't, you know, that stuff, if, like, you know, if everybody just wants to play video games and stuff like that. Nobody wants to work with it. Everybody wants to type to their fingers. Nobody wants to actually go out there and fix stuff, but they just yeah. want to type. So, like, I just want to say, keep pushing that agenda. It, you know, it's a great skill set. Appreciate like, it, my brother. Salute to you, my brother. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, we got uh, Aunt the Baptist. What's, What's up, brother? What's up, man? Doing? Chilling, man. Chilling, bro. Hell yeah, yeah bro. I'm chilling, man. Yes, hey, bro, sir. I'm going to tell you something, man. You done talked about a lot of things, man, that caught my attention. And I had posted under one of the, the uh, segments, man, like, since this dude been talking, man, I've been fixated on everything he's been saying. And it's like, when you start talking about you being a Pisces, okay, I'm a Pisces, so I can understand a lot of the things that you say as far as the things that you see that from the third eye. Because... Mm -hmm. You anointed, man. You anointed. And I know a lot of people that know me. It's a lot of people that know me in the state of Texas and Mississippi and Georgia. Shout out to Texas. Shout out to Mississippi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Colleen, Texas, man. And I'm going to tell you, like. Oh, you starting to break up a little bit. God is going to. Okay. Yeah. There you go. You're when back. a person is anointed. Okay. Yeah, man. And when a person is anointed like that. God is going to begin to wake people up and going to send people. It's not mm -hmm. anything that you're doing in and of yourself, bro, because all the things that your mom was talking to you about and all the things that you experienced in the NBA, bro, I mean, like, man, it fascinates me, man, because all of that learning was built up. And when Jesus called, and I'm not trying to preach to you, man, but look, at the Baptist, it's not what you would call like a Baptist. I'm not a Baptist. I believe totally against everything about organized Christianity, everything mm -hmm. about the leader that they put there. You know, they say that this pastor is here and everybody should come to him and listen to him and whatever he says is gold. That's not how God works. Jesus mm -hmm. never, never operated like that. So at the Baptist is in correlation with John the Baptist who separated himself from the custom, customs of the church and went out to the wilderness and mm -hmm. uh, began to baptize people in the new concept of life. He didn't wear the clothes that they wore because he was just trying to make a statement that, look, I understand that God clothes us. He clothes mm -hmm. us from the beginning of time from our shame. When we mm -hmm. able to understand the concepts of John, you know, then, you know, pretty much. But I'm not here to preach to you, but that's what anti-baptism is, you know, to uh, I baptize people with the spirit, with the truth. And, and, and with you going through all those things that you went through, it's like I think about how Jesus, when they say uh, they wanted him to turn the water into wine. And then he took the water and he put it into the pot. And then he told his disciples at a certain time, he said, draw out now. See, it's a time that God says, draw out now. Mm -hmm. And it was a reason why Stephen A. Jackson tapped them and Matt Barnes tapped them. It was, a, they had, they, they couldn't, they could not control that, bro. It was destiny. It was, it was destiny that they do that. And, I'm glad and, they did it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But, but you know, and then, but it, it, it calls you to come to the forefront and, you know, create this harvest, this great field of people that are ready to, to listen to, to the thing, because they know you're speaking from, from God. When you speak about uh, Lil Nas X and, and the way you speak about it and you just begin to speak, and I know you know that it's not even you speaking. You know that it's just the spirit speaking. Yeah, I've been mean, looking, I mean, looking back at the video like, oh, Lord, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. That's the spirit. That's the spirit, man. He, he just takes over and then he begins to speak. And it, it frightens me. It frightens me in a way that I'm like, I wonder do people even recognize what this guy is saying? Yeah, when you so. start, yeah, when you start speaking about everybody, you know how the, the company policy is uh, uh, orchestrating people's lives and how money, everybody's doing things for money, the, uh, the through line. You know, mm -hmm. all of those things like that, man, that is the devil. You yeah. know, you can't serve, you can't serve God and money. You mm -hmm. know, you can't have two masters. 
Mm-hmm. And so when you have a master, like you say, the zaddy, then you going in a way, <laughs> you going, you going in a way that you, you don't understand that it's a higher up, the higher powers that conduct this world way up there. And mm-hmm. I know the devil know, oh man, yeah. he done pulled the Anabaptist up there because we done done everything to put his name in the dirt because mm-hmm. look, it ain't got nothing to do. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't. And, 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 and it's the things that, uh, that people do not see that cause a lot of things to happen. But a lot mm-hmm. of the things that you're saying, man, has, uh, you know, really, I had said something to you about child support. You say, hey, bro, God gave you a, um, God gave you a plan about child support. And it wasn't so much about child support as it involved the money. Because remember, I'm totally against money. But I see how the devil moved in, in a way, the higher ups moved in a way that most people can't see. And mm-hmm. what they and what they did was they used the law. See, look, you don't hear no advocates. I don't see no advocates. I don't remember no advocates from the 1970s or the 1980s when we saw a whole bunch of black women out protesting about black fathers not playing for their children. I don't see no protests for that. So how could a law become um, in fruition, become just uh, evolve around us without no protest? But we can go and protest about certain issues, but we can't get no law for years. But this mm-hmm. law came suddenly, oh, we love you, black women. We love you. We're going to come in and we're going to take care of you. We're going to give you this money. Hey, look, it's don't let that black they, they, they make a lot of money off of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't let that black nigga come into their house. Don't let him see his kids. And if he do come over there, you can call us at any time. And we'll come over there and we're going to put these cuffs on him. And we're going to put him away from the child. Because yeah. we, we really, really know that he's not good for that child. Now, mm-hmm. we the ones good for this child, so we're going to tell you what type of programs we're going to have to do. Now, you're going to have to put him in daycare. Now, we're going to have to, you know, get some type of Medicaid and all this. We're going to take care of all that, but just don't let that nigga come over there. And yeah. then when he do get out, we're going to let him stay way over there. We're going to take the money out of his pocket. We're just going to go get it. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna ask nobody nothing about where he stay at, who he stay with, how much he need to pay. We never have a car, do we have some draw? We ain't ask that nigga okay. nothing. <laughs> we see that check stub, we're gonna take that money out of that, and we're gonna get some now, and then we're gonna give you some. And then the black women, like, okay, Zaddy, we're gonna go soon, yeah, soon, 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 soon as the, soon as the, 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 the baby is in their stomach, they run into the child support. They run into the child support because they done put the fear in them and they done put the option. Whenever the, de- the devil operate, operates off fear, and when he puts fear there, he's gonna always give an option. And the fear is, hey, the statistics show that these black young men are not going to take care of their children. How can they take care of their children? They don't have no job. They already smoking weed, so they ain't got no misdemeanors that are going to build up. One more, they're going to be in jail. And once we get them in jail, now we know ain't no white man going to let them come work on that. That's the whole concept of us doing this. Because the mm-hmm. businessman is the one who put the politicians in position. Mm-hmm. So then, so now the women, the women are fearing that the black man can't take care of the child. So then here they go with the option. Put them on child support. You don't even get a nigga a chance to buy the baby a pamper or a napkin. Get the baby a napkin from McDonald's. <laughs> Damn. I'm, I'm at work. Damn, I'm at work. This nigga at work. He go, he, he, you ain't even get a baby just boy. He got to go straight from work to the child support office. Okay, yeah. so, so now you... You got that option and these women go into that option and then they start making the options more beautiful, yeah. you know, by providing them with beautiful houses and making them pay $26 a month to stay in the house. And, and they just stay there and take care of the kids, sending the kids out so they can be taught how to be. That's what Nas X and all of this influences that they have on the kids. We love the kids, but we're going to present a leader before them that they like. And we're going to put the agenda on this dude because we done put him in a house. We done gave this rapper. I don't even like to talk about rappers, man, because I rap. I came from the hip hop. I, I, I'm a veteran, man. See, I, you can't miss me in no aspect of life, bro. Yeah. I'm straight from Mississippi, straight from the hood, man. Everybody know, like, damn, that nigga, it. I always want to fight that nigga right there. It always got the wood in it. I know that. Yeah, man, then shit. I ain't had the fear from the black man in the 90s, man. I'm 10 years older than you, man. I'm 49 years old. I'm a veteran. Fear yeah. the 90s. Thank you we don't... service, bro. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. We don't know what we're going to do. So we yeah. all, some of us joined the military. Some of us was captivated, uh, captured before we even got out of high school. Some of my homeboy went to jail. 
you know, that Amendment 13 that people talk about, all of that stuff. With, with, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to tell you something, bro. Like, Biden, Trump, I don't get into the politics. That's what, I mean, you can't miss me in that aspect because I know that it's controlled by the businessman. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't put, I don't anoint no man. The Bible said Jesus permitted himself to no man because mm-hmm. he knew what was in man. You know, mm-hmm. and, 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 and until you go into the wilderness and experience those 40 days and 40 nights of, of, uh, uh, of fighting against the flesh, man, and fighting against everything that involves this world, then you're not going to return in the anointing. And so I don't put that up on no man because I know I went through that. Those 20 years that you went through, I went through 20 years, man, of, of God anointing me at a young age. And, man, I know the Lord ain't going to, I know the Lord is not going to leave me, never forsake me. Because right. I understand, I understand his word in a way that I can say, fuck them niggas. And then, not, and even though people can say, oh my God, yes, that's what John the Baptist did. John the mm-hmm. Baptist called them vipers and all types of names. We look mm-hmm. at it like, oh man, John the Baptist was just saying, oh, you vipers and you jerk. No, he was saying, man, you. <laughs> he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when, because when God's children come up, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And they that take it, they take it by force. These niggas like me and you, man, that, that we not in the flesh at all. We all up here. Just like that nigga talking about all oh, my feelings. And, oh, I just had the feeling that Jabil Cosby had all did this. And, and then, you know, this is all this old. You studying through your feelings, nigga. You studying through I your feelings. Ne- I, I ain't never heard uh, uh, feeling, feeling so many times from a man when we're talking about specific things that we can look up. This woman has been working. And she got a number that she didn't like. That's not a feeling. She's going off the numbers. Simple. Right. Right. Yeah. And, through, and through your return, when you sit there and you listen to this nigga talk for however many minutes, I'm just looking at this nigga from every period. Oh, a feeling. Then all the fucking feeling. Oh, I feel that. And then, oh, I feel that. And then how can you feel for somebody as a human being? Now, nah, man, look, human being in the flesh ain't got nothing to do with the truth. And you told him in the response that I was waiting. I said, I know he's going to. I said, time frame you say yeah. it's a time frame man you gotta understand that the old turns into the new man you can't take new wine and put it in the old uh you know sheets it's gonna bust it new wine yeah. has to go in there that's the new wine we got those sisters like you say was well, beautiful they presented what? themselves well and i was like that's yes not only were they beautiful see the thing that they don't like that's the first time that, i watched the game <laughs> oh boy they what they don't like about maria taylor is that she's articulate yep and she, yes Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because look, see now, fine, she, tall. Oh, bro. She began to tell the women to love your black men. Like she was saying, when she was on that bed, I was, if she began to tell a woman like that, oh, now we got a new Ali. We got a new Muhammad Ali. We got a champion to us, the people's champ, because mm-hmm. she done done everything and you can't, you can't. Oh, go, let's, let's watch our sister ghost talk about football. So mm-hmm. they're going to make us tune into that. Man, look, the concept that you got advertising, uh, you know, the big three, I was like, that's amazing. I say, because I know where that could go. Yeah. You know, as far as like you can advertise everything for big three. You can come, we're going to look, you know the players, nigga. Yeah. You the Stephen A. Smith now, bro. You done took that. The big three is now you. You know <laughs> all the players. You can get to play. After every game, you can get to play the interview. You could yeah. be right there after the games and say, look, right after that game, we're going to come and talk with Nate Robinson. You got the hookup, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, bro, you got a whole league, man. That's what God gave you. To mu- who Much is given, much is required, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, God is giving you a lot, bro. And I'm going to tell you one more thing before I go, bro. I'm going to tell you, because like I told you, I had a plan for child support. And it wasn't so much about child support. It was about intervening. What I see this nigga trying to do is how spirit see, because I'm warring against the devil. You know, I ain't running no man. That's why I say it ain't got no man. It got nothing to do with it on the face of this earth. Donald mm-hmm. Trump, nobody. This is mm-hmm. against me and the devil. See, the devil know, oh, my God. But he know God didn't already prepare me. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you, what they try to do is remove the black man. And I think, like, what we need to do as men, we need to really, really, really stop talking. And we need to form us some sinners where fathers are, where those black men that don't have those fathers, and the father and the men that do have fathers that we all can come together, we can intervene in a lot of things, like and and make it law that before a woman is able to put child support on a man, that they have to come through this system, and that we could take the woman and the man and provide what we can provide for our. Now I'm not just talking about black people, and I'm not just talking about white people. I'm talking about bro. You know, I don't. I, 
I got white friends, man. I was in the military. I got white friends. I had a white mentor, you know, and I'm talking a Christian mentor. He had gave his life and gave his flesh away, and his spirit had risen to Christ, and that's what I listened to. Like mm-hmm. what you say, if LeBron got somebody next to him that's, um, you know, white, that his spirit is against the things that his spirit seems to be with, then you got to say something, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to say something. Your words can't, you just can't say, okay, well, because I see now that it seems like you're trying to get on the same path that Jordan got on. You get ready to get off of your career. You trying to put your, you the one who started that agenda about who's the greatest, LeBron or uh, Jordan. Because we look at Tim Duncan as greater than LeBron James, and Tim Duncan ain't greater than Kobe. So how you skip over Kobe? Kobe yeah, how you skip over COVID and start this agenda, pushing this media agenda, the media, SPSTN, all your, your, your clubs that you got there start to, oh, Jordan, he did. Who's Jordan better? Who's Jordan? Who better? Skip Bay? Who's Jordan? Who got all this? Hold on, bro. We, we don't want to, we don't want to bash LeBron too, too bad because I don't want people to think we just attacking the brother. But I want to, uh, I shout out to you, my brother. I want to get a young lady on. Uh, I respect you. Uh, hopefully you call back in another time, my brother. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, let's go to Miss Nina. Nina. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone in the chat. Um, I just wanted to say I love what, what you're doing. Um, ever since I first heard you talk, I'm like, oh my goodness, finally, finally. Be <laughs> I'm like, finally, we have a man out here that's speaking the truth. He's not afraid. And yes, I'm so glad that you're bold and you're fearless because it does take a lot of courage to say everything that you're saying and to have this voice. And, um, you know, I actually I'm inspired and encouraged by that uh, because I have a podcast and I'm not going to plug it. I'm not one of those people. You can plug um, it. Go ahead. No, no. Cause girl, I let the decide. people know who you are because uh, I want to know, too. Look at look at you, girl. Look <laughs> Honestly, you know what? I'm too shy to plug it. And that's probably one of the reasons why it's really, really small. Um, <clears throat> but on YouTube? No. Uh, so it's actually on, um, it's on iHeartRadio and it's on um, Spotify and a couple other platforms. Hey, what's it called? You ain't that shy. What's it called? <laughs> No, I'm not gonna plug it. I'm, no, seriously. I'm somebody says it. Nina Sky. Is it Nina Sky? It's not. <laughs> Don't somebody say in the chat. They know you, girl. Know you. <laughs> you know what? I'm not. I'm not gonna plug it. I'm actually really shy, and I prefer for like people that don't know me to hear it. Um, but at any rate, enough about that. So I talk about a lot of the things that you talk about, and you know, I actually for a time felt like, man, you know. Are, are people kind of like looking me up or are people kind of like hating on me or stalking me because I'm saying some of the things that I'm saying? No, you're too shy to let them see you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I actually had some experiences where I felt like I was actually being like watched and monitored and like some of my calls are being recorded. And I'm like, you know, I understand where you're coming from when you say certain things and you have a certain conversation and you have certain values, a lot of people don't like that. Higher ups don't like that. And, you know, with my podcast, you know how you can see the people who watch. I had a, I had quite a few downloads every day. So somebody was listening. And after I started talking about like, you know, C-19, I won't say because I don't want you to get demonetized. You know what I'm talking okay. about? C-19 okay. and other things the listeners and downloads just drop dramatically. So I'm like, man, did they kind of do something with my podcast? Oh, but absolutely. Anyway, they did. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, well, somebody was listening to this. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. You are such an inspiration. Like that brother said, you're definitely anointed. Keep being you. And I, I really um, adore the fact that you are. Geech. You actually remind me of my grandfather, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he used to curse like a sailor, but he had a really, really strong relationship with God. Like yeah. he was so dope. He used to smoke a cigar and meditate. Like yeah, I've been smoking my hookah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yes, keep me and you keep doing what you're doing. You inspire me and so many others. And uh God bless you, Kwame. 
Thank you. You too. Email me support at buslife.com. Okay. Support at buslife.com. Let me actually type that right now. Support. I almost gave you my other email. Girl. You better stop. Oh my God. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's so silly. Yes. All right. Thank you, Kwame. Have a good day. Right. You too. Oh, let me read some of these super chats because they're going away. Uh, Denise uh, T. Kwame, please stop entertaining these people. Okay, thank you. Uh, Melissa Miller, super chat sticker. Uh, Melanie King, let's put together a tour. You and Kevin Sanders will sell out venues. Let me know and we will get this ready. No cap. Hey, I like Kevin Sanders. I do cool. I don't be knowing where these super chats go. I guess every after a while, they just go away. Mm. I know uh, Ice Cube probably ain't expecting this, but I just feel like doing it right now. Hey, yo, bring the fire all summer long with the big three and your homeboy Ice Cube. Starting July 10th on CBS, Triller, and Fight TV. That's right, every Saturday. Bring the fire with the big three, baby. Yay, yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you know what? I got to see if my boy Self Talk got a video because I'm starving like Marvin. And I want, I, I'm having fun with y'all talking to y'all, but an old boy got to eat something. So let me see if Self Talk got something to entertain somebody for a quick little second. I know my boy Self Talk and Carcino got something for y'all four hours ago. Yeah, we got Glow Stick and Rob Parker. Boy, Self Talk, you ain't. You don't never let us down. <laughs> yeah. Self talk. Let's get it. I can go get me a little sandwich. Come on with these ads. I need to get something else going. This is YouTube premium. Something. I thought I had YouTube premium. Oh, I had the little black owned apparel right there yesterday. Hey, y'all, I'm gonna go check my PO box today and see if y'all done sent me some stuff. Cause I weigh what stuff you now. Said, crazy. I need to find that shit. All right. Hold on. Let me share it with the screen. Wait a okay. minute now. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold Here, let me see. Me hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Big swole up. Hold up. Nina. <laughs> hey, Nina. I'm about to look for your email right now. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. I need to go look for your email right now. Play right here. Let's play with wine. I'll be right back. Brother, home. I got on gray sweat, man. Kills 
me, and you know, this pains me, Chris, because we put our blood, sweat, and tears into this business, and the notion, like, oh my God, you know, they just keep... You put your blood, sweat, and tears, but you ain't had a face yet to live yet. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. You telling people you put your blood, sweat, and tears in the sitting down gossiping. <laughs> How's that blood, sweat, and tears running your damn mouth all day? All right. <laughs> I'm 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 lost here. Uh, the Truth Jones, thank you for having me on. Thank you, brother. Melissa Miller, super chat sticker. Appreciate you. All right, let me finish chewing my apple. Let me let this finish up real quick so I can chew this little apple because everything else I got to cook. But in your line of work, you make that work at home. Mm -mm -mm. Wallet mouth. Mm-mm-mm. He put his blood, sweat, and tears. What else you got to say, Wally, now? Giving black people jobs right. or whatever. It's just... African <laughs> Americans, that thing. Yes, please, stop it. I just can't... It, it makes me sick. <clears throat> All right, I'm ready. Uh, who's, who's ready? Miss... Hey, how you doing? Can't hear you. You got to turn your mic on. Hello, you how are you? Good. How you doing? I am managing. I am Miss Ravioli. Remember, I'm the person that advocates for victims of domestic violence, victims of child sexual abuse, and victims of toxic relationships, whether they're intimate or non-intimate. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you because there are a lot of victims that don't have individuals that support them and they believe that they are. And when you stood up and spoke up for Jessica Reed, it was like, we got to hear the voice that maybe we never heard. Do you know what I mean? Let me ask you this. How did all of that stuff with, with uh, brother Lester charge get covered up so easily? Like, cause the general public, he said on interviews that he was, he went through the whole process and it was, you know, it was nothing. He went to court and all these different things. So we thought it was taking care of the legal the right way. How do you stop situations or put laws in place to maybe the uh, if it's a young kid. She could you hold the prosecution to maybe she's an adult 18, 21 to maybe she's more ready to, you know, deal with the person as an adult instead of a teenager. Well, I, I don't think they're going to do that. You will actually be surprised at how many people get away with it. They don't have to be on lesser charges, um, caliber, level. his level, okay. you know, um, and then think about the children that can't even articulate, that can't mm -hmm. speak out. And I'm talking from the ages of zero to maybe mm -hmm. 14. Some judges don't even want the children to take the stand. Um, I, I believe that people need to know about their bodies. People need to know the effects of date rape, date rape drugs, not just how they affect themselves, but when you're out with your friends, how it affects your friends so that you don't think, oh, this person just got sloppy drunk when really they may be under the influence of something that someone put in their drink. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yes, and then I also um, educate people how to identify abuse, abusive people, like readily identify them. But a lot of times when I'm talking to men, when I name the characteristics of these people and they have some of those traits, then mm -hmm. they don't want to listen. But I try to explain everything's on a spectrum. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yes, you may have some charisma, but you may not be using it in a malicious manner. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of different signs. So I think people need to learn the signs on how to readily identify an abuser and understand that people that have titles, like in, just because someone is an attorney or just because someone is a judge, just because someone mm -hmm. is a Leo, which is a law enforcement officer, 
doesn't mean that they are qualified for that position. Mm. It's mm -hmm. just a title. Mm -hmm. You said a, it's just a title. I ran into a doctor like that. <laughs> Doctors too. I mean, it's everybody. The same people that you went to elementary, junior high, middle school, whatever you want to call it, high school with, college with, grad school with. Those are the same people that end up with the titles. Mm -hmm. Everybody did not do their own work. Everybody does not care. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are there to get paychecks. And I'm not saying everybody. Right. But there are more. There are a lot of people that just go to work, do the bare minimum and go back home. I agree. <laughs> and I know it firsthand as a business owner, it just be like. Dang, you actually, you know, you signed the contract that you would do this. Why are you acting like I'm bothering you because you're on Facebook? Like, calm down. But because you are you gotta, bothering them. I know. It's like, <laughs> it's, it, it, I had a company policy too. It wasn't that you go get fired if you did something. I just didn't want you to be on the phone because that takes away from your ability to work. And uh, yeah, taking the phone out of people's hands at, out of, at work is a problem. And, and that's crazy. If I it sign is. up to do something, I'm not gonna have a phone in my hand. Well, I try to. I'm trying to move away from the word "crazy" and say it's abnormal. Mm -hmm. It's abnormal. Yeah, it's been yeah. trained into us though, because even I found myself, you know, going to dinner, looking at the phone, you know, more than you should. Because exactly. you know, before, yeah, I was taught that you don't bring your phone and all that stuff to the dinner table, and then. You start having the TV in, <laughs> in the room while you're eating dinner. You start having your phone. It's like you're never talking anymore. So, Right. Huh? Exactly. Well, I definitely but I'm going to try to make it. I'm in Atlanta, so I'm definitely going to try to make it to Brunswick. Okay. Well, come but on you now. Even, you don't have a date. Now, don't say the oh. date all close to the time no, no, when no, they no, start no. jacking I, up the hotel prices. Oh, no. I'm working behind the scenes. I'm working for you. Trust me. I'm working <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> and we're working to see if we can get a hotel to give us like a fixed rate. So we're going to see what we can do. I got a couple friends that work at uh, a couple hotels down there. So we work. Okay. And yes, because I'm a victim of domestic violence, I do know like there are some shelters here because you said that you were in a shelter and I know mm -hmm. like I also tell people like how shelters really are mm -hmm. and why people sometimes don't want to go why they rather stay in the house with someone that they know than mm -hmm. to be in a then a in a new chaotic place mm -hmm. where things could get worse do you know mm -hmm. what I mean yeah and then I and I also witnessed that some of the smaller shelters are more helpful than the big name shelters, just mm -hmm. as with a lot of other organizations. Okay. Well, maybe you can come back on and you can uh, just point some of that stuff out for us. And then me and you will just talk one-on-one -on -one for a while instead of bringing, having everybody in the queue. And then you can bring some of that information so people can start donating and coming by and help out the shelters. Okay. I would love to do that. Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, Hopefully I, I see you in Brunswick well. now. I'm going to hold you to it now. I'm going to put the date up. I'm going to put the location and everything. Okay. All right. <laughs> All, nice right. All right. All right. Toodles. I hope my energy was okay now. I don't want no trouble. <laughs> uh, Clarence. What's up, brother? Oh, yeah. can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you just fine. I hear you. Yeah, man. First, I want to say, man, I appreciate all the work that you've been doing, you know, on YouTube. I discovered you like a few months ago when it was like the anniversary of Stephen A. talking that spec. Yeah. And I was like, you know, when you ever do something I'm like, I don't know much about Kwame Brown. Let me check them out. And I discovered your YouTube channel. And you had like 20,000 subscribers. And I listened for I listened for like four hours straight. You just jock, uh, dropping gems back to back to back about politics, race, just everything. So I admire your ability to juggle so many topics and you're educated on that and i one thing i wanted to touch on with me uh being like a multi-family investor like right now i'm in my own duplex and you encourage trade congratulations my brother that is the biggest thing i believe to build our infrastructure and protect us against you know a lot of the forces including gentrification mm -hmm. like for instance um a lot of the, the properties in our neighborhoods are you know they may need some work you know you go to the hood i'm from the hood you'll see that abandoned house if we can get trades, not only can we work for ourselves and have an influx of money, we can be, begin buying these homes in our neighborhoods, repairing them for a lesser value because we're doing the own work 
And we yep. experience the positivity of being a home ownership, being a homeowner and have pride in that. Not only mm. on top of that, we can then, since we're saving money, once we have our community stable, we can't be gentrified. Then we can think, well, we got this pool of money. We're, we're all contractors and that. Maybe we can pull into a bank and start giving each other micro loans where we can start having small businesses and that and rebuild our communities internally. And I believe it starts with that training. training and I respect that. And another thing that I observed, I'm not going to talk to your head off, is that because when me seeing the influx of you know the Hispanic race, no, no, not racist at all. Mm-hmm. I love them, but I understand that they're highly skilled. And they build them. And yeah. I really believe that they're a strong labor class. They, they take trades out of the school, but they'll let an influx of 20 million Hispanics who are highly skilled in doing these jobs. Right. So I can see how we may can be displaced completely as a race because mm-hmm. you know I'm from the from the hood, you know, we got we got a lot of different traits that are positive, but a lot of us are on this government subsidy and, and mm-hmm. all that. So we can be replaced. And I like the fact that you're giving people true skills that can build our community grassroots from the ground up. And I respect that about you. And that's one thing I wanted to say today. Brother, you were spot on. I don't even have nothing to add because I agree with everything you just said. I mean, that's that's the problem in our community, and that's what we need to face because. Once you have people that are untrained and unskilled, and like you said, you're replacing them with skilled people, what is the use of these people over here? It's time to put them in a box so they can become slaves again and work for free. We can get free labor out of them. So we got to be careful. We got to get some skills. We got to get some coding and not just be shouting in the street. So I'm glad you can see my brother. I appreciate you, man. Keep up the good work. Yes, sir. God bless you, my brother. Man. Young man know what he's talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, but who is somebody on there? Mark Law? I don't see nobody. All right. Well, I think this would be about a good time for me to go get something to eat. Let me read these super chats. Uh, Stetson, uh, oh, some, oh, Stetson uh, Jordan, uh, Horseman Law Academy, sitting in my truck on break, working on my three trays, listening to Mama's Cooking. <laughs> man you when once you learn three trades trust me ain't gonna ain't nobody gonna be able to tell you a goddamn thing ain't nobody gonna be able to tell you nothing but y'all have a good day i'll see you guys later on i'm about to get up out of here the sun is back out now it's on man see y'all in a little while